The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of this broadcast or podcast without the express written consent of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Weekend, or Spaced Out Radio Limited is strictly prohibited. Listener discretion is advised. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. To Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anymore. I don't know I, anymore. I've lost some estrogen. I've lost some estrogen, and my voice has deepened, and I'm a little bit afraid of myself. Hi, James. <laughs> I put that under the heading of too much information. Welcome, everybody. I know, TMI, right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a combined uh, Cosmic Passport with Elizabeth Anglin. And Spaced Out Weekend. And I want to thank you for beaming in to us here on the 13th floor of the Spaced Out Radio Network down in the paranormal portals of Cascadia out here in the Pacific Northwest in our little log cabin quietly. And thanks for listening to or to us on spacedoutradio.com, on Spreaker, the High Plains Talk Radio Network, and coming soon... WQEE 99 Rock the Key in the greater Atlanta area. And we also want to big give up some big hugs to the United Public Radio Network at 107.7 FM in New Orleans and their listener from over 160 countries around the world. We welcome you, all of you, to tonight's show. And it's one of those special ones. And again, we do broadcast seven nights a week from 9 p.m. till midnight Pacific, and really, really early in the morning, if you're in Europe or in the eastern seaboard of the North America. And good afternoon, and happy tomorrow to our listener out in, oh, let's see, New Zealand, Australia, the, the Philippines, and my favorite little spot in the Pacific until it goes underwater, Fiji. We'd like to thank uh, Ron Bumblefoot Thal, of Art of Anarchy. You probably knew him from Guns N' Roses for a few years, like about 10. He's the man behind the official sound of Spaced Out Radio. And you can follow me, follow me on Twitter at James Tyson SOR. Give our Facebook pages a like, Spaced Out Radio Show and Spaced Out Weekend. Come see me on Instagram at Spaced Out Weekend. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, Spaced Out Radio Show, and find us on iTunes, Intune, and download our shows from those websites as well as YouTube. And I'm going to continue on with the rest of this probably in another half hour. I'll, I'll add a few of these little commercially kind of things in because uh, we want to get right to it. Now, it wasn't that long ago that our good friend Joanna the Medium came on and found that she could actually communicate with an extraterrestrial guide that came in, oh, probably about six months ago now. And it's a fellow she calls Rob, and he's he's a good lis- he's a listener to Space Out Weekend, a good friend of the shows. <laughs> and um, she's been getting information through Rob, not just about Uncle John, who lost his keys down the couch, but we're getting information about things that are a little more out there. 
we started getting information on Bigfoot and a- other alien activity, uh, multi-dimensional light beings, and such through Rob or through Joanna from Rob. So Elizabeth and I plan to sit down with Rob over a beer and talk about some of those questions that have always come up in paranormal, um, you know, or in the vast paranormal. Do Bigfoot exist? If so, what is it? Dogman, um, Area 51, all sorts of questions. So we had a three-hour show on that, and then we followed that up with another couple of hours where Elizabeth and I and you got down and uh, put another list of follow-up questions together. And if you didn't hear the original show with uh, Joanna and uh, getting the name of Bigfoot, which is called, which is an echo, and is a being that is brought here by a group of um, ad- more advanced beings called the Travelers to mate uh, with large uh, mammals on Earth in the mountainous area and kind of the bush area of the planet. Um, you're, you missed a lot, and I need you to realize that we did ask a lot of questions. And one of the other things I'd like to tell you guys, we've already had a, um, a number of opportunities for people to ask questions. If we end up going through all of ours, which I doubt, by the end of the show, we, we may take questions from uh, the chat rooms. That's on Spreaker on Facebook, and uh, any of the other groups that are listening to us right now. Uh, Twitter, also. Now, we won't go in there looking for your questions, because I tell you, we have three hours to go through these, and a lot of these, we have more questions than you could shake a, a uh, alien at. It's amazing, uh, the follow-up that came through from you, the listener, about the first show when we started hearing about um, uh, the reptilians and bases on the moon and none on Mars and there's nothing, there's no underground bases in the U.S. uh, with aliens in them, etc. So we do have a number of follow-up. A lot of them to do with really narrowing down, well, they're all narrowing down and drilling down into the answers we first got on that first show. So with that... I want to say hello, Elizabeth. How are you? And Elizabeth says hi. Uh, I, <laughs> Elizabeth has just run off to do something. Um, it's an estrogen thing. I have no idea what she does. So I want to. Th- oh say, no no no! I had face muted. I'm sorry. I was talking. Yes. Oh, hello. Oh hi. hello. I'm well. <laughs> you are well. <laughs> Uh, now I have face mute. Yeah, face it's terrible. Mute. It's a, it's, I'm, yeah, it's a terrible disease. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Um, and we have our little list. We have our volumes of questions. Now the other thing is, young Joanna is a little bit under the weather, which is not going to affect her her guide Rob because he's oh. always healthy. But Joanna will have a bit of an issue. She's got a bit of a sore throat. So we've got to make sure that she doesn't do a lot of talking. So we'll try to get the questions um, as as exact as we possibly can. So we're not all over the place on them. But I do want you to realize that if you want a reading from Joanna, a fabulous reading, you can go to her website, joannathemedium.com, and uh, make an appointment it's uh she does them over the phone by via youtube and she also puts out she has a youtube channel i hope i shouldn't say she does your readings by youtube does it through skype and um she does have a youtube channel to go look up to again joanna the medium.com joanna how's your throat it's not bad. I, I I'll be good. By the way, Rob says he prefers wine, uh, wine and red at that. No beer. What's red wine? <laughs> okay. Um. That's what I drink. That's what I have. Oh, <laughs> and I so. never drink. Oh, that's why he said cheers because he kept saying cheers. I'm going. What are you cheering to? Okay, cheers. so maybe that's what. Maybe he was making a joke with you. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. 
Well, <laughs> hey, I got a really quick question. Has Rob ever been terrestrial? Did he go f- through a time on Earth with us? He asked to repeat the question and put it more, more succinctly. Has he ever been down on Earth going to buy a bottle of wine and drinking it? Has he ever been a human in a human um, form? More of a human form than human, yeah. He's telling me or asking if he was in, ever in a human form. The answer is yes. And he's saying to me around 1500s. But he's also telling me that his incarnation is not predominantly on Earth. He typically, quote unquote, occupies other dimensions. Very cool. Very cool. So he's, he actually has wine then. He's had, he's had a drink of wine. So that's good. So he knows of which. He understands what, what grapes yeah. are. <laughs> yes. Where was he? What, what kind of yeah? What, what kind of wine was he drinking? Because you know, which France, uh, Italy? He, um, no, he's actually pointing me more more towards Middle East, um, and I'm being taken to places where okay, well, I'm seeing pyramids, so that's Egypt. Is was it, would Egypt be considered a Middle East? Middle East? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And please, just for the record, whenever I get this information, I have no clue what I'm saying. I do not hold me responsible. I do not own any of this. I have the time. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Just for the record. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's very unique about this. You'd actually have to listen to the show back to know what you said. Yeah, because half the time I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a direct channel. Very cool. And I apologize because I just threw a nut in my mouth and I started chewing on it. And then I realized, holy cow, I'm on the show. So... <laughs> Please do not do that at home. Oh, you can. I just have the show. So, again, we had a number of questions uh, put to us in regards to the very first show when Rob was coming through. And just so our listener knows, we aren't going to ask about 9-11 and conspiracies. I got close enough with the JFK stuff last time I got that. I asked three questions, and I got shut down on the fourth. It was first one was, how many people were involved in the assassination of JFK? The answer was three. And then I asked if the shooter, uh, how many people pulled a trigger? One. And then I asked if that person has ever been arrested? The answer was no. I then asked who it was, and that's as far as we got. And the reason being, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is... Yes, we're getting the information channeled through Joanna, but Joanna is doing what she's doing f- for a higher purpose. And there are a lot of people out there that uh, have made a lot of money on conspiracies. And uh, we're not going to get into 9-11 because there are people who have written books on the conspiracies of that and do the talking tours and make a lot of money and travel around gosh, the world talking about how it's an inside job and things like that. Um, And we're not going to get into that because Joanna doesn't have the backup to uh, fight these guys in the media or, you know, get a nasty letter. It's not her, it is not her path to take on that negativity. So we're not going to get into those things. We're going to come close uh, and if it's too close, I get told... He'll tell you. Yeah, he'll, yeah. He, Rob will tell he'll me. So tell yeah. we're pretty good that way. He's, yeah. he, he's, he doesn't pull any punches, and uh, it's all good. Uh, Elizabeth? Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. For Rob, and, and this is just to, to... He doesn't have to answer these questions, but can he, is, can he see the probability field going forward at all? And what he's saying me, what he's saying to me is that, um, yes, there is, um, let me just listen. Some probabilities are of higher proportions than others, but he's also saying that when it comes to timelines, we as humans put too much emphasis 
And when that happens, we lose track of what is beyond. So in other words, once we get hooked on a particular information piece, as far as timing, it's also almost like we forget everything else. So timing isn't really, um, actually, what is it? Well, he says time is fluid. Yes, I get that. Okay. He says people often want to know want to know when. That isn't necessarily written in stone. It is a movable, breathable component of an experience. So timing it uh, aside from not being always the best thing to predict because there, it's movable, it also has a life of its own, so to speak. So that's why timing yes, is, is tr tricky. Yeah. Okay. All right. But probability. Yeah, he says probabilities. Yes, do exist, and he can give you a parameter of such. Okay. I, I Thank love how you. he talks. The way he talks. Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Elizabeth. Now, just so the listener knows, Elizabeth has a number of questions regards uh, like pre nineteen fifties. Uh, and I'm going to, Elizabeth, I like to start off with the, get the Bigfoot and Dogman stuff out of the way before we get into other monsters and things. Are Sound we going to talk about Hitler? We are. I knew it. Because yeah. that's my thing. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, but that's pre-50. Drat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you get to do Hitler because you, 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 I'm a you guy. love it so. And, <laughs> yeah, that yeah and I bad. like U.S. stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very, we are going to no, sorry. Uh, Bigfoot, big feet. Uh, in our first episode, we found that Bigfoot was actually an echo. This is a being brought here by a group called the Travelers for uh, mating purposes, so that they can literally get a piece of an uh, in adaptab adaptable, um, we'll call it DNA for the lack of a better term in their system because where they come from they don't have that and uh so it's they to come here it's, for to, that. it's to prevent extinction so to it's about adapti adaptability yeah. adaptability and that these what we see or what uh we've seen for years as sasquatch or bigfoot these really tall stinky hairy things are actually a a a i would say cloaking it's hard to explain what this is. Anyway, they're actually mantis beings. And it's how the mantis being comes here to, a, and it's what it basically changes into. So it gives it the availability to mate with the large mammals on Earth. Um, so here are my questions. Now, he says that these are post, mostly in the mountains and mountainous areas. And it's an inter galactic species the questions from our listener come into first of all rob what does it mate with bears mostly bears okay mostly yes and how long have they been coming to earth to mate 50 plus years 50 plus years now Again, do we get into the, because they've been seen around here for over 100 years. So hmm. when it says 50 plus, is he talking, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, it's like saying, well, over 10 years. Well, yeah, because it's been 1,000, so. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. Uh, let me go and ask, because okay. um, I just caught that, and I don't know much about um, Buckford, so I'm going to ask him. Sometimes he answers questions in a very um, convoluted way, so to speak. So he doesn't evade the question, but he answers it. Um, not necessarily how we want to hear it. So let me just ask him. He says it's 123 years to be precise. Oh, thank you, Rob. That, <laughs> that's kind of nice. He's, uh, Which is 50 plus. Yeah, it's 50 plus. But now he understands when we ask like a timeline, it's we, we'd like basically for the human timeline on these things. Um, Rob, and I'm going to ask, I have a number of... He, he's also saying to me, he's just... He, he's following up with this, and he's saying that it is only since the 1970s that the um, seeing them has increased. Does that make any sense to you? Would you know? Yeah. It's pretty much since the 70s. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, primarily because we've uh, the populations around the areas where they're seen more have grown. Mm. Now, one of the things I I do have to get into we we did he did explain that they come here they mate and they leave, they but yeah. it um, Elizabeth has encountered a family with children. Oh. So when when do they leave? Like it, do they actually give birth here or do they give birth at another location? Or do they leave and give birth? Or if they do, are they can the kids come back with them? What he's showing me is that there is seems to be two ways of doing this. I see one very clearly as shown to me, um, a, a Sasquatch, I guess, or Bigfoot, um, going back into whatever it looks like, spaceship, and it leaves once it has accomplished the mission. So um, I'm assuming it's a female, although it feels very male, which I wouldn't understand unless it had the capacity to do both at the same time. And, and just As so... In- and- and mm-hmm. just so you know, and you and you don't remember this, but that's what was explained in the first time we talked. Oh, both I see. male okay. and okay. female can carry um, okay. the child. Okay, okay. The, the other one seems to be, but he's saying to me, this is rather rare, where the offspring will, or the family with the offspring will choose to hang around for for a while in order to see how the offspring adapts to the um, the environment here in this density. Okay. But he's saying to me, and he's underlying, this is rather rare. So whatever Elizabeth has encountered seems to be quite rare. But she has seen a lot of rare things, he says to me. Yeah. Elizabeth, yeah. do you have a follow-up? Oh, well, I think, you know, I've always been told that Colorado Bigfoot groups were different um but Mm. nobody would tell me why they were different so i don't know if that is that what he's speaking of or am i just weird well we're all weird so that aside (laughs) let me go go back so he says what is that ask the question I, i was told by other bigfoot communicators that the group in colorado was different and they but they wouldn't say why they were different. They just said that Colorado Bigfoot are different and they're harder to um, befriend. And they're, um, and I was like, well, okay, well, we, we've done that, at least to some. And, mm-hmm. But they wouldn't say anything more about why they were different. Um, okay, so let me just go back. Why are they? I just want to ask, in fact, it's the way I ask a question. Um, are they, in fact, different? In some respect, yes. Okay, in what respect are they different? Their, they, their size differ. Um, he's showing me they are slightly r- larger and taller. Okay, now, why is that? He sa- Okay, he says it's a different formulation. I don't know what that means. Yeah, and they're the ones that have the families. Offspring? Ah, okay. Yeah, offspring. Okay. Um, he was also showing me at the very earlier, at the beginning, before you asked those questions, um, they're actually quite gentle creatures. They're, he's showing me, and I can actually sense the energy. They're very gentle and they're le- easily scared. Well, that, that's been, you know, that's obvious. But they're saying to me, they're, they're, they're not aggressive. They're, as species, they're gentle. Yes, okay. very protective. Can I ask him, I have... I have a braided something that came from my horse, a braided mane. How did that get there? Was that was that Bigfoot or did something other weird happen? And it's not braided, it's macrame. I'm not seeing clearly what it is, but I do see it's light in color. Is that is it in fact light in color? Is something? Yeah, he was, was some, he was okay. white. Okay. He's showing me that this was a being that was curious about your horse. Mm-hmm. But 
he's not really going into it. He he makes he shows me the picture that I would describe as Sasquatch. Oh, I don't know why I want to say Sasquatch, Bigfoot. I guess that's the interchangeable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And he's saying to me this. Um, it was a young one, as and he's comparing mm-hmm. it to like a teenager. Mm-hmm. So curiosity. Male or female? Yeah. I sense. I sense. I sense it's a male. I feel it's more male. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and thank going back, you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Rob and Joanna. Going back to our, our listener le- um, questions, has, and we've kind of covered this briefly, but I because they're coming from the listener, I have to ask them anyway. Has a Bigfoot or the Echo ever killed a human? And he says, he says no, and that would never happen. And I'm saying, well, if it gets too close... He says to me, no, they would rather run. So yeah. he emphatically said no. Has, have Good. humans ever killed, killed one killed or one. captured one? Um, he says to me there were several that were injured, but I feel that none were captured. Okay. Um, let me look to... Uh, we got 123 years. They've been coming here. Uh, and I'm just going, sorry, sorry, listener. I'm just double checking to make sure that I don't have, I don't miss one of your questions when it comes to Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot, do they, are they basically the same as a Yeti? He is, he's giving me a comparison that is, it's like comparing sun to the moon. Okay. So I guess that would be a but, no, but they come from the same yeah. space, but they come from the same space. Oh, okay. So they're, they're also alien beings that are down doing what they have to do to survive or are they earthbound beings a species that uh just looks like the bigfoot he calls them interdimensional beings okay so they're the same they're the same they're uh interdimensional Interdimensional. beings Mm -hmm. and we go from let's see if uh there was a question asking if the bigfoot is a slave race He says to me that slavery is not known to other races than human, to races other than human. Okay, that's good to know. Um, what would- there is called co- there is codependencies mm-hmm. in st- structures where one structure has codependencies, but he says slavery is not tolerated. Okay, good. He says it's a human behavior. Yeah, we're yeah. idiots. Um, what would you gift a Bigfoot? We had a question come in because a guy, one of the guys likes to, he, he believes there's some on his property. He wants to uh, gift them. What would be something you could, uh, they would like? The first thing he said is give them your heart and not that you have to rip your heart out. Okay. So it is to greet them with affection rather than um, trying to create something um, out of the ordinary. But as far as, are you asking about food? Is that what you're asking? You know, I think that might be one of the things. The question? Primary okay. things, yeah. Okay, because he's showing me uh, offering one an apple. Okay. That's very oh, common. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, will they, will the Echo actually be able to recognize like if we put a camera up in the tree and like a game camera will they recognize those but he's saying to me that they have a very highly skilled sensory perception so though they may not necessarily see it with their eyes they will perceive the um, signal emanating from a particular piece of equipment okay interesting there's highly high high sensory yeah Okay, because they they won't go off unless you kind of cross a beam, but I guess they may pick up the beam. 
Yeah, that, 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 that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Has there ever, has there ever been one captured on camera? There's been like for real. Uh, perceptions of like, oh, mm-hmm. somebody says this is a Bigfoot I caught on my game camera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, it's all it, 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 it all comes down to somebody else's opinion yeah. looking at the yeah. guy's picture. What I'm being told is that these species do not come down here to be caught for entertainment. Yeah. So they're very sense. careful yeah. and they're very skilled um, as to not get themselves into quote unquote trouble unnecessarily. Now, that kind of follows up to one of the other questions that I have about Bigfoot. It's um, mm-hmm. why are they nocturnal? Probably because. We're I will all don't a, answer. A I will ask him. I will yeah. ask him. <laughs> He's actually saying to me that it is easier for them to move around when it is dark. He says to me that light, um, their perceptors in their eyes um, and light, uh, there's not a lot of comfort with that. So whatever light, I guess, is here, is is it's easier for them to move around at night. Yeah. It's to do with their perception. Yeah. It. Uh, Aside it, from the fact that they're not as seen as, as much, they're much yeah. more concealed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do what's my other question here? Uh, does Bigfoot know Dogman? Have they ever bumped into each other over a, okay. a wine or something? Um, yes, and it's not a wine. That's a, that's a joke. Okay, let me just <laughs> let me just probe for. Let me let me see if you can show me more. He says they're both intergalactic species, but one project was mismanaged. And he's pointing at the dog thing. The dog thing. The dog man. The dog thing. The dog man. Yeah, and that's the... um, It was something to do with the calculation having gone wrong. Yep. Some kind of calculation. And that that is something that's going to be above my pay grade, I think, to figure out what that actually means. Now, a mm. uh, question right to Rob. Does he, d- and just, uh, he know? I better ask him. Can you ask him if he knows that I have some audio of what is perceived as the echo or Bigfoot um, speaking? He says he knows that you have some information that you think is echo. Yes. Okay. Would he be able to tell me if it is or not? He's asking me to keep my mouth shut right now. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Because he knows where I was going to go. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to let him listen and to see if he could tell me he could actually translate it. He literally t- showed me to zip my mouth. <laughs> okay. Because... He's funny. Mm-hmm. Well, he's not funny. He's he's playing his cards close to his chest because we do... Uh, these they came from California and the Sierra Nevadas. They went to a linguist. And mm-hmm. if everybody knows, you know, the story from the Inception game, uh, basically uh, the Enigma machine... Uh, which was the coded yeah. German machine, yeah. Yeah. it was broken by literally um, figuring out like two or three words. Once those two mm-hmm. or three words were figured out, the entire code was broken. And if Rob could have translated one or two of those into actual human words, then mm-hmm. by sending them back to the linguist and mm-hmm. building backwards on it, we could actually get the language or a part, a part of the language and understand it. That is not, what Rob is telling me is that's not for us to know right now. He is telling me, or he's telling you, and, and okay, and the mm-hmm. listeners, that some information we are not ready for. Yeah. Yeah, it's... And he says, and he shows me the word chaos. It will yeah. be amplified and it would call chaos. And he says, you do not need that right now. No, we have enough chaos going on. Yes, we have enough pies of that. Enough, yeah. We we can make our own chaos. It's, uh, it's yeah. We, heck, we, us humans, we he's, can make chaos while we're sleeping. 
He says, these are species that mean no harm to the human. However, human want to censure, sense, sen, say it please, sensationalize everything they see. No. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, and I know because I'm married to a reporter. If it, if it bleeds, it leads. And he says that ha and having certain information be out there would actually be harmful to the species of which we are speaking. And that's his language, not mine. No, and that's good. And, and that is not we the intent. Yeah, we do not want to harm those species. I don't care if it would be really cool. I, my job is to ask the question and respect the answer. And that's what we have to do. Yeah. He said, um, most humans would want to catch them and experiment on them, on them. They would not want to have them as a species in their society. Yeah. That's, um, unfortunately, there's still a lot of them until after the shift and we get cleaned out. Um, but that's a whole other issue. The I want to go, Elizabeth, if I can, to Dogman, and then I'll bounce you over to the pre-50 stuff. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, Robert, <laughs> Rob, because we're casual. I was, we, we had some discussions on Dogman. Uh, one of the, a, a number of the things that were, were developed uh, from our first conversation is that Dogman actually, again, was kind of an error in the formula and this being was a miscalculation. Made, a miscalculation. Yeah. There were thousands of them in North America and in Russia, that they only live to 27 years old. They're not harmful to humans, and they cannot breed. And that's it. Now, we have dogmen and people reporting to see dogmen, and they look, they're growly, and they'll chase you, and they've got demon red eyes and all these horror stories about this thing. Mm -hmm. are is what those people are seeing or what they're reporting um, embellished by imagination or are they seeing something different he says anything that is seen as out of the ordinary will be perceived as frightening and therefore elevated to a higher um, equation of um, again what's that word Almost like a scandal. That's that's not quite what he said. Yeah. Okay. It's so just to make chaos. Exaggerate. Yeah, chaos. Sensationalism. Yes. Yes. Sensationalism. Yes. 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 So we can sensationalize these things. Now, how how long ago did this group of beings? Uh, how long ago were they introduced to Terra uh, Earth? I'm seeing the year 1927. Oh, that's interesting because the 27 comes up. That's me being my police thing. The, the number 27 oh. coming up twice is mm. is odd because um, mm. they lived to 27 years old. So pre-1927, mm. nothing, they, they weren't around. And then after that, how did so many get here? If they don't breed. I'm trying to see what he's showing me. He's actually showing me um, beings coming from different space and breeding with what looks like a bear. That then turns out to be this thing. Okay. That has apparently gone sideways. Yes, obviously. So, it, so it's not that they have come from other space. Is that they were bred here, but the whatever happened, the miscalculation, as he called it, was outside of the parameters of functionality, and therefore it had to be abandoned so it was, a, it was a genetic screw up basically. miscalculation a miscalculation yeah it's uh and see we've got bigfoot coming here to breed with bears 
And instead of them leaving with the child, maybe the Bigfoot were impregnating the bears and these things are coming out, but who knows? That's almost a question, but I'm pulling it back. I'm, tr- yeah, I'm trying to see <laughs> if you can show me. No, he's, he's showing me whatever, whoever the being is. I'm not getting a clear picture of it, but um, uh, mating with bears and then it just turning out the way it turned out. Yeah. So we don't know what the being that mated the bears look like. I, I don't see it. No. Okay. I don't see it. Yeah. It's it's very fuzzy to me right now, this oh, picture. Big fuzzy thing. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go through my dogman list here. Uh, the Montauk Monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, ask Rob if he's familiar with that name. Uh, he is, but I'm not, because okay. I'm asking him, what is that? Is, That's not the one we talked about last time, is it? No. No. Um, no, okay. That was the uh, Mothman. Okay. And that he said was an apparition. That wasn't uh, there something about a, something in the lake and with eggs. Oh, no, that was uh, Loch Ness monster. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. okay. Um, Montauk monster. Ask Rob mm-hmm. if the Montauk monster is also what we call Dogman. First of all, he says you're asking if it's real. The answer is yes. Um, one second. He's showing me kind of, sort of, but not really. So um, that's not a very clear answer for me. Nor I. Can you can you ask it again, please? Rob, is the Montec monster dogman? Are they the same species? He says to me they're intertwined, but I feel that there is a difference. But they're intertwined. Can I ask a question? Yes. yes. Can I ask him? Okay. Was the Montauk monster um, manipulated by scientists? Earth scientists? On Earth. Earth scientists. He says to me that although it was an experiment, it was not experimented by humans. Okay. So that would be a no. That's a no. Are there any humans, um, uh, humans are, are, sorry, as you were, are humans themselves, is our, the human race, an experiment? He says to me, no, you are a valid congregation. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Congregation? What does that mean? It's, I mean, I kind of get it, but it's it's an easy way of it's the it's the most simplified way of saying the human race is an individual existence. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. it's a it's a, yeah. actually it's a perfect way of saying it. Okay. Um, and that's it for my Bigfoot uh, dog man on this page, and I I'm going to let you go with your pre 1950s stuff. Uh, Elizabeth, okay. and I'm going to dig... Uh, oh, crap. I just found... Oh, I found a few more. Hold on. Um, uh, has Big... Okay, we've already asked that. Uh, no, actually, I got all these. Just for Off okay, you go. Good. Yeah. He, good. Says you, he, says you, he says you have one more question, um, James. Yeah. Oh, great. Can you tell me what it is? <laughs> <laughs> or just give me the answer. Oh, God. Oh, he's smiling. Maybe it'll come to you. He says you have one more question I you know. forgot. Okay. Is it James or is it me? Because uh, I always have personal questions. James. No, it's James. He's pointing James. at James. Okay. And it's something to do with the dog man. Okay. I'll keep looking there. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can start, but we, we're going to have to go on a break in a little bit. No, so, we're not. Uh, everybody in the chat, okay. Uh, everybody in the chat rooms. Yes, we are. Everybody in the chat rooms. Um, I'm going way to the way back. Um, the first question is: Were there, or are there, a race of aliens called Anunnaki who um, created?
created or designed human beings to be their slave race. And you can break that up. Were there Anunnaki? Did they? He he says. Remember that slavery is a human experience. No other races participate in enslaving their own species. For that would be unnatural. Good. That's a very eloquent but, answer. Yes, but were there beings that were like gods that may have been Anunnaki? Maybe not enslaving mankind, but mankind blame them for things because they were different, um, like the Greek gods, the Norse gods, the Egyptian gods. What he's showing me is that there, there were, and we're going back like ancient times, there were beings that have worked with a human form or with a human um, incarnation in order to help them elevate and evolve. And this has a lot to do with technology and their conditioning, mind conditioning however something uh, for whatever reason um, some power wanted to have more of a control and control he says is mostly done by the mechanism of fear and because those higher beings were working with pure intentions and love they had to separate because the two of them were no longer on the same page got it does that make any sense uh Yes, it does. It, it means that uh, it means that something else got in between humans and the Anunnaki. It goes along with something I saw. I'd like him to confirm. I I once did a session where I was told that the Anunnaki had spent time genetically changing our food sources mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they would be better for us. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the technology that he was um, referring to. Yeah. 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 And yeah. That, that would make sense. I also have seen uh, from a past life reading a gentleman who was moving large blocks with his mind, a telekinetic moving of large concrete blocks like that were used in, similar to what were used in Egypt or were used in Egypt or somewhere in the world, and he was moving them by thought with his mind. Would that be related to the Anunnaki, or was I completely in left field? He says you are referring to um, a... Say it again. You're referring to a being or a set of beings, if you call it that way, who have their interdimensional who have the ability to not only perceive with thoughts, but also construct with thoughts. Okay. So the answer Thank is yes. Thank you. The answer is yes. Thank you. All right. And here, here are some that someone, some other people ask. Was the Holy Grail a real item? Is it a real item? He says the Holy Grail was a functionality of the human mind. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's a communion, communion with Christ. It, <coughs> Is that it, what it, it means? It's yeah. something along those lines, depending function. on who writes about it. Yeah. 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 Function. Of One of the questions mind. I have that came through about the Holy Grail was, was it a real cup or does it define Christ's, Jesus Christ's bloodline? Okay, that's really interesting because he says to me, we're not going to get into it because too many people's lives depend on it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it does because well, we're into and, the... And I, go ahead. Yeah. Religion. And I like... Yeah, I love the, what he said because if... There's so many writings that... that and, and so many of the Templar Knights went off looking for the Holy Grail when actually what it was was a connection with Christ consciousness, with you know, divinity, and and they were all looking for this cup. So there are many books about that. Yeah, they and took that's it probably literal. A better way. Yeah, they took it literal, and it wasn't good. Bad things happened. <laughs> so. And always do. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a follow-up on that one from our friend Joe. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, was it discovered by the Templars and brought to North America? But I should first say the Ark of the 
covenant mm-hmm. um, if it did exist or did it exist if so what was it okay so now I'm getting into territory where I have completely no knowledge of this so this is going to be tricky for me because I have to interpret this okay hang on can you ask the question one at a time please uh, did ask- a, did the did the Ark of the Covenant exist? Was it real? Yes. Okay. He says yes. However. Oh. <sighs> okay, hang on. Um, and keep in mind, I don't know what it is, so I'm doing my best here to interpret what he's showing me. It was. Uh, was it a piece of art? It. Um, yes. Yeah, I guess. Because he, he's <laughs> yeah. saying to me, it was quite beautiful. Saying to me, yeah. it was a piece of art that was. Um, what's the word, please? Inspired by higher dimension. Okay. So uh-huh. it is a yes, but there is a however. However, that does not discount its validity. I understand. Does it, um, does it still exist? He shows me that it exists in pieces, but it is somewhere hidden underground. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it brought to North America or any pieces of it brought to, to North America? I'm asking him three times. He says no. Okay. However, he says to me, he says to me, there are replicas of it. Oh, dude, yes, they use them in movies. Um, <laughs> Joanna, I've that, got, that are perceived that are perceived as real. That's as what real? He means. Okay. Yeah. The last question I have on that, sort of to do with that, is he familiar with a search of an island in Canada on the east coast called Oak Island? And could he tell me if anything is going to be found in there, um, or will anything be found on Oak Island? The only thing I see is that there is either a portion of the Owl Island or something that is hidden beneath the waterline. Yeah. However, he's not showing me what it is. Yeah, they've already gone down that deep. Mm -hmm. They're already down there. And um, there are so many different theories of what they're going to find. And who it's it's an amazing. um, Oh, wow. It's amazing feat of engineering from hundreds of years ago. Would he be able to tell me if the engineering on that island that hid whatever items Mm -hmm. a few hundred years ago was that Mm -hmm. man-made first of all he said to me that whatever is going to be found is going to have an essence of prehistoric times prehistoric interesting yeah like what what is that what does that mean that's usually before prehistory yeah prehistory before human before yeah it's before viking it would be before Mm -hmm. yeah so, okay. it'd be. But who who actually did the engineering that hid this item? He says to me, it was a cosmic complexity designed by many beings. Go figure that one out. Okay. So cosmic complexity. What does that mean? Cosmic complexity. It was a compilation of beings that got together. I. It wasn't a bunch of pirates, unless he's calling a whole bunch of guys from different countries on a pirate ship. No, No. he says that. He says pirates wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. Um, I think. But what he said. What he's saying to me. That whatever will be found, and I do feel it's going to be found at some point. Mm-hmm. It's it's he's he's calling it an invention. Okay, and so it it it, it might have an effect of something that will look like an invention. That something will be used going oh. forward. 
Oh, is it something that we as humans are going to need in about in in the future? It is a piece of information that is technologically that te- technologically bound that will become very useful in the next 25 to 30 years. Oh, there's Excellent. a big star on that one because that's a whole other line of questioning that we're going to come up to if he's allo- we're allowed to ask. Okay, that was my follow-ups. Uh, Elizabeth, you want to go? Because I, I honestly... Oh, no, I'll, I, I'll I want to skip- go to that island. Like, next week, you know, let's get, let's get some money together and no, we'll go uh, and... Go on, yeah. Go on Netflix. Go, I, go on. There's an entire TV series about two brothers Ooh. that are um, searching the island. This goes back. We to, can do uh, much better than them. I know. Really? How did they? How did they know about it? It they when they were children, and the same way I knew about it. I read it mm-hmm. in a Reader's Digest magazine uh, about a couple of guys on Oak Island drilling down because they thought that's where Blackbeard's treasure was treasure was and they put a couple of drills down and one of the drill bits came up with a gold chain on it and then they realized there was coconut fiber and this is an island in off of Nova Scotia so if if you're down in the U.S. thinking of Maine and up in the eastern seaboard north of Maine and this island has flood uh, the, the tunnels are protected by floodwaters that come in through coconut fiber that huh. was used to suck ocean water into the different different places. And there's a number of vaults going down, down, down. In that that itself could be proven uh, in in technology, I guess, maybe. Oh, yeah. They've already dug down and found all that stuff. The trouble huh. is that they're having is as they, they go down, down into the into the bowel of the island more water comes in they are you know they're having all the the um engineering struggles you would have looking down yeah that's what they're that's what they're showing me yeah Yeah, he's showing me that the 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 deeper they dig it's almost like it collapses on itself yeah and there is there is a myth or not a myth but there is a history uh legend that um six people must die before the quote unquote treasure is found. Five oh. people have died so far. Oh wow. Out of and Well maybe I'll wait. Yeah, wait. Yeah. yeah. Wait well, till the six <laughs> what the one of the original guys who lives on the island there is going down looking for that. He's in his nineties, so Oh my God. Well there yeah, we go. That's yeah, so no he brainer. may pa- yeah. if he passes it may go on. But it's I'm gonna s I'm actually gonna send the guys this hmm. little clip. Interesting. And uh, maybe they'll get a hold of you and fly out there and say, okay, Joanna, ask Rob, point to it. But I think my gut feeling on it is that it's only going to be found what it needs to be found. Yeah, it's not time yet. No. No. Yeah. Okay. So they're doing a good thing. Uh, we're not going to go to a commercial, Elizabeth, because this is, um, oh. yeah, so that's seven minutes we don't have to worry about. So carry on. Well, Joanna, is that okay with you? Are you feeling strong? Yeah, I'm good. But well, if I need to kind of get a break, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so back in the way back, um, has anyone found Noah's Ark yet in the modern times? He says no. Was now, there a Noah's why, Ark? Why, why would he tell me that it is hidden beyond, below the sea line? Why would he tell me that? Below the sea line. Does he mean it's underwater, or does he mean the old sea line? He's, and, talking, and, about, the, and, he's talking about the elevation. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. below sea level. Oh, is that what it means? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what he's ask saying. Him, ask him if it means below sea level. Okay, I'm going to ask him if it's below water or below sea level. Sea level, not water. Sea level. Okay, it's below sea level. Interesting. Um, does he know how old it is? I see the number 1250, but I don't know what that means. 
one two five zero. That I have no idea what that means. Yeah. Would we add another zero? Yes or no? Yes, I actually said no. He said no. Let me just ask him again what the number is. One zero zero two five. Oh, one zero zero two five. One zero zero two five. Okay, so ten, ten. That makes one, more zero. sense. Ten. Okay, one zero zero two five. Yeah. Okay. And you can check that. Um, is it n near a shoreline? I heard a yes, but it's very faint. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Um, I think that's that's enough. Um, does anybody in the chat have any questions about far back things? Hold on, James. I've got lots. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, were the dinosaurs killed off on purpose? He said the dinosaurs went extinct. Okay. So it wasn't a, we're going to get rid of them and start up a new garden. No. Okay. No, he's not showing me that. And here's one from, I can't remember who this is from. Was Jesus married to Mary Magdalene? He says, now we get into religion, eh? <laughs> oh, he actually said, eh? Sorry. My God, yes, he's a... Eh? He, <laughs> You've, you've got a Canadian um, being. So, hey, so you're going to get into religion, eh? <laughs> no, no, it's not religion. This is uh, this is I mean, to do with it's a relationship. History. Yeah, it's, it's history. Totally history. <laughs> okay, uh, Helen. Yes, did you say Helen? Oh, no, say Mary Helen? Magdalene. Mary, Mary Magdalene. Okay. He says to me it was a union of love, so... Oh, they were shacked up. Good. Um, did they have any children? Mm, I first I got no, but then he showed me a little boy, so I don't understand what's very... That's very two different ways. Um, let me just go back. Yeah. Well, before he said that they had... It was a whatever union that he said, he actually said that they had sexual relations. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay... And then he said they had the whatever union word he used. Um, I keep hearing the word son. This is not clear. I see I see her holding a baby and it's a son and I see him looking at it, but I'm not getting a really clear picture or feeling of what that means. Okay, I'm going to leave that thought because that could even be, you know, Jesus. He could have just showed up after he had passed and she may have had a son mm. later or who knows. Mm. Yeah, or, you know. Or? But, you know, it, it, there's a lot of controversy here. Does he, would he like us to continue on this questioning or leave it? Oh, way to go. Don't ask. Just, just ask, and then he'll tell me where to go if yeah. he doesn't want to answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, so did, did this boy that Mary Magdalene is holding, did she leave and go to the north with him to Turkey, to the area that's now Turkey or Syria? He's saying After to me she had to leave. She had no choice. Okay. And then, he says, the, uh, and then he says the word shamed. She was shamed or she would be shamed. Right, okay. Did, did um, she have a child? Did she have a child? Do you know? No, I no. I don't know. Oh. It's not reported. It's not, n nothing is, the only thing that we know is that she was one of his followers and she went to um, see him on the, at the crucifixion and after, in the tomb. She was with his mother at the tomb. Excuse me, oh. people, if I'm getting this wrong. So, hmm. but there's no talk of her having a child. This is completely out of my area, like completely. Um, uh, did that child grow to adulthood and did he have children? 
First of all, I'm going to ask who this kid is. He says to me it was her son. And I'm asking who fathered the child. He's showing me Jesus looking at him, but he's not saying it was him. So, or he doesn't want to, for whatever reason. He doesn't want to, yeah. Well, for whatever reason. However, he's very clearly showing me that she had to leave. And I see that there was um, a lot of sadness with the why she had to leave. And I hear the word shamed. She would be shamed. So maybe she was, she had a child, but she was, she never, nobody knew. Yeah. Maybe Jesus had a son. Name Kevin. Maybe. I don't want to start anything, just people, just so you know. I have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just you know channeling for the guy standing behind me named Rob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go after him, not me. Okay. Do you have any other questions, James? Do you have a bunch more? Yeah, I've got pages here. Um, how, oh, no, you, of the old, way back, way back stuff. Way back? Were you going to talk about Moses? Yeah. No, we, well, that would really, that's like three whole religions we would upset. No, um, could you not do that? Yeah, upset you just, religions? No, could you just not say that out loud? Not that Rob oh, doesn't know okay. you're thinking it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, if I, mean, I ever went on you know, an investigation, is, is you're radio, staying at home. No, 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 no. <laughs> if I went on a police investigation, I had to interview somebody. Like, did you yeah, kidnap the child? Oh, don't ask them this that. Is, That's embarrassing. Oh. It's, it's radio. Okay. It's ra- okay. So, did ask okay. The so question. here was my question: What did did Moses actually have a conversation with the big G on the on the mountain, or was it an intermediary or another oh, wow. intelligence? Now we're getting into big guns. Okay. I don't know how yeah. I feel about this. Okay. Let me just yeah, check in how I feel either. about this. He's laughing at me because I'm very uncomfortable when it comes to religion. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. Shh. Sorry. I was yelling at I was shushing. He says, Moses heard the voice of God in his head. Yes, he was led into the mountain. And he has heard in his mind the information he put forth on whatever it was. That was not his word. That was mine. Okay. Good was- good answer. Good answer. I like it. I'm happy with that. He said it was um, God-inspired. That's how he said it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I've got some old-time... We're uh, coming up in the more of the modern era. I think Joe has asked me... Uh, to touch base with Rob on these. Who built the Sphinx and who built the pyramids? Okay, let me ask. He's actually showing me Egyptians, uh, humans, Mm -hmm. building Sphinx. However, I also see that there seems to be some, again, intergalactic help that is connected to this. Okay. Are those the the telekinetic um, people? uh, Beings that can create with their mind? Yeah. Helping. He says this was done with advanced technology, not necessarily with their mind. Okay. Okay. Now, he's pointing me to pyramids, so let me just see. And he says, same goes with the pyramids. And I'm saying, I think we kind of figured that out. He says, you will never truly know. Oh, drought. Well, how about if he... Well, even if he tells us, we never truly know, because we can't prove it, right? Oh. not 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 in our lifetime, anyway. No, I... I kind of believe what he says. So if Rob tells me how they were built, I would believe Rob. And he not says my- that human beings, human beings at that time, with the technology that they had, which was advanced in many ways, but less than advanced in others, 
they did not have the ability or capability in order to build structures of such substance. Yeah. Uh, uh, the word substance means so much. It's not like mm -hmm. it, they don't build them of that size or that, you know, that pretty. It's the mm -hmm. substance of the actual building itself that's important. Now, this kind of gets me over to places. This is one of uh, our friend Joe's questions again. Puma uh, Punku. Uh, and that's, I have no idea if I'm saying it right. Puma Punku. Who built it? And how old is it? And then I'm going to get a hold of Joe and find out what the heck it is. I blacked out. I'm not connecting to it. Okay. Not to worry then. Okay. Um, to, let's see. I've gone through. Hey, I got a question for you. This is kind of personal. Mm -hmm. um, the Valley of the Kings. Uh, mm -hmm. Some more building in Egypt, um, and anything back about thirty thousand years ago. How is my DNA, my personal DNA, connected to that area? He says 500 years ago, you were one of those people, or you were one of the, one of the peoples. But what five, was 500 I, years ago? Yeah, but I'm, my DNA actually goes back 30,000 years ago to just north of the Valley of the Kings. Mm. Okay, so, let me go back. Yeah. He's bringing me back again. He says, your most recent reincarnation in those times or in those areas is or was 500 years ago. Okay. About, about because, 500 years ago. Because my actual DNA, like my DNA first mm -hmm. appears on earth just north of the Valley of the Kings. You know what he just said to me? And I don't know if he's joking or not, but he says, you do realize that you have some DNA of the reptilian, do you not? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and you can and you can tell him that with my nose somewhat askew. So I don't know if it was sounded funny like or Sherlock not. Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> he was Sherlock Holmesing you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. You do not know. Listen, Mr. Well, Police Holmes. Investigator, you do realize you are reptilian. <laughs> well, 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 Holmes, I, I, I'm just a doctor. I don't know. And I'm a, um, so. Yeah, I didn't know that. I my DNA basically first appears like I say north of the Valley of the Kings, goes up to the Holy Lands, over the top of Europe, through Russia, into Scandinavia, over to Scotland and down. And it took thirty thousand years to do it. So I'm so, guessing. So in other we got words you traveled around the world. But we got lost a lot. There was a lot of sleeping around going on. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. I'm probably good. <laughs> But I don't have any um, Genghis Khan in there, so that's, you know, that was, he was spreading the seed quite prolifically there for a while. Um, um, are, you, are you at all drawn, do you have any information about you um, having any genetic um, component from, like, Brazil? He's showing me Brazil with you. No, I, I'm not, um, I, no, I don't. Hmm, Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Um, I'm just going through my my list here. Uh, have you gone through your your basic list? Because I've got like three or four pages to go through. Elizabeth, I've let me, let's move on uh, from the way way back. I can't think of anything. The only other thing I want to know is: Did on after Friday the thirteenth? when the Templars were kicked out of Europe by, I believe it was Richard, somebody can correct me on that, the king that didn't want to pay them for their services. Then, Rick III? You know, killed a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, Rick III. Um, <laughs> did, uh, did they come to North America, or did some of them go to North America? Hmm. 
he told he says that most of them were killed before they had the chance to cross or cross over. Yeah. So they Does crossed over before they crossed over. Yes. Yeah, so, some di- some did, but not. Does it sound like a whole bunch? Yeah, it would be like one boat. So did at least one boat make it, or maybe two or three, somewhere in that area? Um. I want to say, I I feel like I need to say a few hundred. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, Did they end up in the Great Lakes and and near Minnesota? He said some of them did, but most of them dissipated throughout the country. Okay. And And like I'm seeing them spread all over. And to get to the Great Lakes, they would have to go past Oak Island. Oh, yes. Yeah. They would have gone past Oak Island. Mm -hmm. And they went down into Minnesota, and that's eventually they turned into the Minnesota Vikings. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Go Vikings. Go Vikings. (laughs) Uh, Okay, where are we here? Montauk Monster, Humans Experiment, Bigfoot... Numbers to the lottery. Oh, um, the lost colony of Roanoke. Uh, I to answer to ask a question based on this lost colony. Um, I know I've seen a television special saying they basically found it because they were looking in the wrong place when they called it lost. Uh, could you tell? Could Rob tell me what happened to the occupants of that? colony he said they drowned would that make any sense yes it would Uh, there was an awful lot of them but they were moving up river oh okay and there is a settlement they found and they felt that it might be people from the the other colony uh, with the lost one or whatever, the people, uh, that they just disappeared. So it's like, yeah, I don't know where they went. So, But if they drowned, yeah, they, they were on the river. And I don't know how many people were in the, the that town, but, yeah, it makes sense if they're all on a boat heading up with their belongings. He said, uh, he's showing me, and I don't know anything about this, but he's showing me this was a time of chaos for them. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with drowning, but it, for whatever the reason of them moving up the river, it had to do, they needed to get their belongings, they needed to get out for whatever reason. Oh, they may have, there been, could have been a hurricane. Hurricane or, or issues with American Indians mm. in that area. Yeah, that's. Because uh, he says, I see the word fleeting, so it sounds like they were fleeting from something. Okay. And it was haste, it was a hasty, it was a, there was a lot of haste with it. Yeah. All right. Um, now these questions are kind of bouncing all over the place with uh, mm-hmm. not not overly um, connected to anything because we're just kind of uh, pick and choose them off my list here so we can get through them. Um, if you were uh, taken now, if first of all the question was, will Dave Scott continue to be taken um, as an abductee? He said David Scott made a pact to be a part of an experiment, and he continues to do so with pleasure. Okay. So <laughs> ask him if he likes it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Was it good? <laughs> during during oh, an abduction with a false memory planted, can that false memory be erased or removed? Once an imprint is made, it cannot be erased. It can be forgotten, but it cannot be erased or removed. Okay. It is a permanent imprint. Um, my friend Kelly will. Are her the the abductions that she is going through? Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Is 
are these going to continue? Her abductions are traumatic to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let me just see what he can show me. He's saying to me that this person in her life, and I don't if, if I'm saying too much, let me know, stop mm -hmm. me, okay? But he says to me that in her life, she feels very helpless. And they are taking advantage of her quote-unquote weakness. Okay. Does are that make they, sense to you? Yeah. Are they, also oh, take, yeah. are they also taking her daughter? They're saying that her daughter is protected, and she's also stronger than her mother um but i feel like they're trying to okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna on my own ask can this be stopped and how can this be stopped thank you that's what my next question was he says to me that she needs to understand that she has a choice in this but because in her particular life she feels she has little choices a lot of how she feels within herself is emanates to her state of mind and therefore projects a weakness. So it has to, in a roundabout way, he's saying he, she has to rebuild herself from inside out. Okay. With her, it's about uh, she feels she's powerless, but it's not about just that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's, some yeah, it's, other stuff going sense? on in her life. Yeah, it's... okay. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. it's one of those things. We went over to her house thinking to do a paranormal investigation, and after talking to her, I said, "No, this that's abduction." Um, who's abducting her? He says aliens would be your term, but these are interdimensional galactic species who are quote unquote experimenting with her DNA. He does say to me they do not cause her harm, but because when she has some level of consciousness, she feels absolutely perplexed and therefore terrified, that in itself is causing her distress. Okay. All right. But so. he, he's, he's showing me that physically no harm is done to her. It's just that she's freaking terrified. Okay. Lovely. So we're, when we these aliens... Um does he have a name for that group? Well, the first thing that came to me was grays. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Little ones or short ones or tall ones? Four, four feet tall. Okay. Hey, you're friends, Elizabeth. Well, you know, I had the same situation. I was feeling weak. I felt like I didn't have a lot of choice um, because really? of things happening in my life. Yeah. Wow. And so I went and I was terrified and... But I did have physical marks and implants that, you know, like in my foot, it's hard to walk when you get something in your ankle or your foot. Mm. Um, but when I, I changed my agreement, I chose to change my agreement when I understood that I did not have to agree to this and that I could make my own choices and that I had personal sovereignty mm -hmm. and got stronger mm -hmm. than that relationship completely changed. So. I actually had a dream. I don't think I told you this, guys, but I, this, so this is correlating to this. I had a dream a couple of months ago where I woke up, and if I told you, please remind me or just tell me to stop. I woke up feeling like there was something between my legs, like something was being inserted, and I woke up. And so the next day, I asked Rob, what was this? And he said to me, um, they were trying to get your DNA. And I said, what happened? And he said, you stopped them. So the next night, I had a dream. And I had a dream where I somebody was chasing me, but they were weird looking with these little tiny little eyes. They were humans, but just little tiny little eyes. And they wanted to uh, take me, take advantage of me somehow. And then I was running away from them. And eventually, I something just snapped at me. And I said, I've had enough. And I turned around and I grabbed one female by the neck. And I said, enough. <laughs> and she and and at that moment she saw that I recognized who she was and she saw that I wasn't afraid for her of her and she was completely perplexed. Mm -hmm. And then I said, "Enough! You're not going to do this anymore." So that happened in a dream the next night. So I've never had these experiences before in my entire life. Mm -hmm. 
So it feels yeah, like this to do with, you know, you, you have to put your foot down once you kind of get to that state. Yeah. Amazing. You have to you have to not run. You have to you know, don't don't agree with the with the powerlessness. Go up to a higher you might not and even if you find yourself not empowered in a moment when you're being abducted, the rest of your life you're empowered. So you can take that opportunity and change your agreement during during your daily lifetime. You can get with your spiritual help and change your agreements. Because they're yeah. telepathic these interdimensional beings and time doesn't really matter to them when when they come to do it like they were doing with joanne or kelly or myself when i was younger it, you know that's not that's not the point of power it can be like it was for joanna but if you're finding it's not take your point of power during the day when you're conscious mm-hmm. and and ch- change your agreement then yeah. and be very firm be very firm and I actually no. asked, I asked Rob, I said, why, what is it like, why all of a sudden am I having this experience in number one? And number two, why, what did they want from me? And he said to me that for whatever reason, I have a DNA that is, I guess they like. And I said, what is this? And it's something to do with almost like a, this is going to sound funny, but he explained it to me. It's like a very warrior like personality. <laughs> And no. that's apparent. <laughs> yeah, there's another term for that. Oh, it starts with a T. Um, hero. Hero. Hero, oh, yeah, a hero oh my ass. Hey, um, one of the things I want to run by you here, or Rob, now that you guys are bouncing back and forth here. Uh, we did the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, look at this page. Do, uh, can, can a, um, one of our space brothers, uh, what we would call aliens, can they time travel? They time travel all the time. And what time do they go? I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) where's Frank Zappa when... Him. Not not on your watch, he says. Yeah. Not on your watch. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, ladies and ge- gentlemen, I'm just going to go through this uh, stuff here again. And what do we have is uh, time travel. The flight... 370 and gosh darn it if I that's all the notes I have on it uh, can he can Rob tell us what happened to flight 370 drowned they yep. get drowned where they're beside an island on on a coral shelf. Does he have the name of that island? He's not giving me a name, but he's... So if I'm looking straight, keep in mind that I don't know which direction I'm facing, mm-hmm. it seems to be towards my left, and I keep hearing the words Philippines. Okay. Um, now, if he's not giving you a name, if I was to say a name, would he tell me if I was right or wrong? He said no. Okay. I'm going to ask him why. Testing him. Sorry. Yeah. He says no, he doesn't take it personally. It has something to do with the people's lives who are lost, who choose to remain anonymous, whatever that means. Okay. So that's why, even, like, I know the name of the island. I know, like, they're still inside the fuselage, sitting on the shelf around this island, about 150 to 200 miles away from one piece of that aircraft washed up. And the lady who actually crossed over 
all the passengers and the crew members, Mm because they all showed up in our house, they (laughs) told her where it was. Her last name is the same as the island. And oh, wow. we cannot, um, we tried to get that information out to the authorities and it just doesn't happen. It's, there's something mm. screws up. We can never get it out there. So they're not meant to be found. And right now they're, uh, China, Australia aren't looking in the right place. And they won't it, it, get back to is it. it. Does it have anything to do with Philippines? I would have to look well, it, it up. It would be to the left. Oh, it, it's well, to the left of Australia. Map, it's definitely going to be. It'll yeah, be the but left of Philippines Australia. Is north. Yeah, it's to the left of the Philippines if you're looking at a map. It's pretty far, but not. Yeah. That, you it's know, closer, if you're looking at a map, it'd be left. Yeah, it's closer to India than it is to Australia. Mm, okay. I suck at geography too and history, so you're in good company because <laughs> you don't and I do. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that's an interesting. If you ever, if listeners out there ever want to know where it is, look for a interview with me on iTunes with a uh, uh, Mary Ellen Rodriguez is her last name, just like the island Rodriguez Island. But um, that said, I'm not going to tell you where the place is um is there this is a this is actually a really interesting question it was part of a lot of questions based on this but is there a natural cure for cancer and by natural i mean is there a plant out there yeah that, yeah so what he's showing me well first of all he said not yet but there's there is a pause. He's showing me that the science is getting very close to finding a cure for some cancers. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's predominantly talking about skin cancer right now, and interestingly enough, liver cancer. I don't know if Whoa, that's predominant. That's a bad one. Is that a bad one? Okay. Yeah. Now he is also taking me to a forest. And this is a place somewhere in a jungle. I don't know where I am. It's it feels like it's a rainforest. And he sh- look. He's showing me. He's asking me to look at a tree. I do not know what this tree is. And he's asking me to look at the leaves. Something to do with the leaves and the properties of the leaves that have a- something anti something leptic um, properties. Anti something lictic properties. I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I can't quite. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. That is. Um, the other part of that question was to do with cannabis, not hemp, but cannabis. Mm-hmm. Does cannabis help cure cancer? It helps to relieve symptoms and therefore prolongs life. Good. That's kind of where I thought that was going. I'm going to ask you, Rob, um, I'm just, hold on, I'm I'm, I'm actually uh, communicating with Rob in my head right now, just to double check to see if I can ask a question. Did he answer you? No, I'm asking him to tell you. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a yes or no. Well, first he said yes, and then he looked at the clock. He says not yet. So what were you thinking of? After the break? No. Quit making me go on a break. Um, (laughs) What is this? You have to go to the bathroom? Go to the bathroom, Liz, for goodness sakes. Go, 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 go. You won't miss anything. You can you can listen to the recording later. Um, a friend of mine, Sarah, bless her, um, got married last year. Worked really hard to become a nurse. Ninety days into her nursing career, got diagnosed with lung cancer, and she's like thirty four years old, thirty three. No history of cancer in her family, mm-hmm. it, and. It's kind of out of the blue, and I'm not, 
yeah, the, the ultimate question that I want to ask isn't uh, something I'm going to say out loud on the radio, but mm-hmm. I'm asking why. Is this just something that needs to be put in her path at this point? It is what her soul has chosen in order to overcome. Okay. That actually answers my que- the question that I was afraid to ask, too. Okay. Okay. Does Rob, is he nodding like I got it? Like for me, you, I'm 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 nodding my head for some reason. I don't know why. So I guess that's a yes. Yeah, good. Okay. Does she does she have, does she have a child? No. Okay. I think she would have liked to have one. Because mm-hmm, I uh, see her with a daughter. I see her with a daughter. So I don't know what that's it. That what that's about. Means that she's going to come out of this okay. 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 Stage four lung cancer. Wow! Wow! In her, in her early thirties, no history, no smoking, no environmental. She was a waitress in a restaurant and then went to college to become a nurse. And out of the blue, got hit. Okay, I'm just going to say something that came to me completely out of the blue. I heard the word asbestos. Oh, wow. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It must have and been ask a house if, she ever lived, if she ever lived in a basement or in a house that had a basement. Okay, I'll ask her. But 30, year, 30 years ago, was that still prevalent? Yes. Right now oh. it is, depending if you live in an older house. Yeah. Hmm. And, and in teaching institutions, I used to do asbestos. Um, Elizabeth, you have to yep. stand on a ladder. We're losing your volume. Oh, no. That's better. There you go. Do we know it, if asbestos causes cancer? Yeah. Lung cancer. Yeah, it does? causes lung cancer. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. I'm going to move off of that, just in case okay. you... She wants yeah. to listen to this. I don't want to get anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, time travel. Okay. Jack the Ripper. A number of people have identified possibilities for Jack the Ripper, Ripper a um, serial killer in old London. Um, one of the, you know, they, they, they connect him to the Masons and the, the royal family and people from a fellow from the U S who went over there and then went back to Chicago and carried on. Um, I have my own belief in who this guy Mm was. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask Rob on the very last killing. There was a witness who was one of the two men who found the young woman's body. And he ran up beside him and the fellow who was standing over the body was kind of shocked and said, Oh, I just found her. And, and he told the fellow that had just run up to you, you go call the police and I'll wait here. So buddy Mm -hmm. ran around the corner to get a constable. They came back and that the first guy was gone, but over history, they determined it was a guy who worked in an abattoir and had a family and he was within walking distances all these murders on his way to or from work. Is that the person who was responsible? What was the word that you used? Ab- ab- abattoir? abattoir. It's a place where mean? they kill, uh, they cut up meat. It's a Okay, a, that's a, really interesting because what he was showing me is first and foremost, he said this was a psychologically disturbed man, obviously. Mm-hmm. We don't need Rob for that, haha. But he also showed me that this is this was a person who was either a surgeon or worked with tools like a surgeon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jack the Ripper was always, they thought it was a surgeon because ah. of how he eviscer- eviscerated the victims, which is a Ew. fancy cop word of, for cutting them up. So... Is he leaning towards, is the person I described uh, as being seen standing over the last woman's body and the person who worked, walked back and forth to go to work in the meat cutting plant, the one that actually was responsible for these murders? He says yes, but he makes me feel like it's not a straight answer for some reason. Was it more than one person? Well, he said to me yes, and then he said most of them. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? And the feeling I get is almost as if because of what was happening and because of how it was sensationalized, there must there might have been another person who was like a copycat 
um, another disturbed person that decided to, okay, this is in the news, that's how I'm going to do it. Because he makes me feel like there was a one person who does majority, but there's also another person who kind of does something similar, but they're not connected. Mm-hmm. That's very common. Yeah, that, that's a... Um, yeah, it's... It, it, you know, they there's things where authors say it was a... Um, a uh, it was a ritual for in the Jewish faith. Um, yeah, it's... Is all, all all different ones. Uh, the guy who was uh, worked at the abattoir. That was uh, another one. That, I think his name was Will, William Burry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm. I think he's the one who is the primary Jack the Ripper. He's saying to me that whoever the person was that ran away. I think that's the way you mentioned. Yes. Or you know, you call him Jack the or whatever the Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Um, uh, he was psychologically disturbed um, from when he was very young. Yes, they those they usually are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's almost I get the feeling, and I don't necessarily believe in possessions. I do, but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like he was just he's just it's like he's not there, like he's possessed. It's just really very strange. Yeah, it's a uh, one of the one of the theories I have is when your vibration drops. Uh, either from alcoholism, drug use, um, depression, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, lack of sleep, stress, mm-hmm. anything like that, you are prey to uh, beings. And you may, may be a low-energy human anyway. So when that yeah. energy drops to a certain point, there are mm-hmm. beings that will step in and control you. He and is, what- he's, connect- he's connecting his condition to his father. So abusive father, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Psychologically abusive yep. father. Yeah, that's very, very common. It's uh, there's always a reason for somebody to do something, and yeah. uh, when you're when you are kind of broken at a very young age, it's uh, sometimes it's almost hard. impossible to fix. Yeah. yeah. Um, Elizabeth. Yes. You didn't get the to the your MacArthur question or Flatwoods. No. Go for it. No, and I want I want to do that, but first. Uh, have you heard of the of the shoes, the feet in shoes? I think we talked been... about that last time. Yeah, I think we Did talked we about talk that last about time. It? Oh, the, okay. The, somehow oh, that like, rings a bell. Okay, you mean washing up in the <laughs> ocean? Washed up, yeah. Yeah, washed up. I forgot. That okay. We asked that one. Here's, here's. I don't know if you did, but it's you, for you some did, reason it sounds familiar. You didn't ask, and the reason it sounds familiar because it happens all over our neighborhood here. Um, what does? happens yeah. is to a human being when they're when they're in the water. Um, you've got you've got to understand it's not somebody cutting people's feet so, feet feet off feet off. It's actually if you look at a clothed human, throw them in the water, the joints are what become detached first, the head, right. the, uh, elbows, and everything. Now, what on the body is completely tied up in a little bag? Is your feet? What do you mean? Well, you've got shoes on, and they're laced up. Okay. Everything else has loose clothing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. eventually uh, just spreads apart. But the shoes themselves will hold the meat in them, and they'll roll around. Yeah, the crabs will get in and eat it out, but the crabs really are paying more attention to the soft bits under under your pajamas or your, your jeans. But the feet will travel. And also, you're talking like when it decomposes. Yeah, yeah. When it breaks down. But what down, about the, what about the joints, the bones that that connect it? The well, they're they're only joined by uh, tissue and cartilage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they Our break cartilage. off. The head is the first thing mm-hmm. that goes, and okay. then it's the animals will take it. But sounds, feet sounds are wrapped fabulous. up. Jeez. Feet are wrapped up in leather shoes with laces mm-hmm. or in okay. boots. So. Okay. But here's the thing, are these, my question was, are any of these from a serial killer, any of these feet that have been found, or are they all just natural, I jumped off a bridge because I was depressed, or what have you? Well, He says, it depends on the area, many of them are drownings, some of them are what we would call a murder cases. Yeah. Okay. Got it? But as a serial killer cutting people's feet off, feet off? Feet, what do I keep saying? No, he... He might just be disposing of them in water. Yeah. And then their feet 
But we have yeah, I'm, people I'm being committing shown suicide. Somebody being thrown off. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, but we also have people um, jumping off a bridge locally because we're on a river and by the ocean. They commit suicide off bridges once a week, once every week and a half. Yeah, it's so a drowning. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, uh, you know, 40, 45 a year. Eventually their feet are going to pop up somewhere. It can be a crappy right. way to die, I think. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. That's enough. I yeah. That's enough. Okay. Yeah. MacArthur, go okay. ahead. Okay. So, well, let's start off with 1947. Dwight D. Eisenhower um, is rumored to have met with aliens and made some sort of agreement with them. And these would probably be the Greys or the Zetas and possibly a combination. But is that rumor true? Did he meet with aliens and was there an agreement? He said there was some level of communication. However, there was no agreements made. Okay. Was there any agreement made after that? Yeah, he's already pointing me 1950s. Okay. Either 1950 that, or past 1950s. Okay. So that brings me to the 1952 UFO flap, which mm. was when aliens or, or ships over Washington, D.C., and then were shot down, uh, witness being shot down um, by U.S. Air Forces. Did that happen before the agreements or after? He says after. Were they this a different group of aliens? <laughs> he said they were uninvited, so they were uninvited. Okay, so there was, it was a group that, have we seen them on this planet since that time? He says, on many occasions, yes, and you yourself, Elizabeth, have seen it as well. Okay. Have you? I don't remember the one that they're describing um, in the Flatwoods case. I don't remember seeing that or a ship like that, So, um, but I may have because I've been around. I get around. But, um, he's, no, he's, showing me, he's showing me a picture of you when you were very young, and I want to say maybe anywhere between three and six, around that age. Okay. Those weren't the friendly alligators, were they? What I called the friendly alligators? No, no, no. But he's showing me you're pointing at something. You're looking at something. But I feel like you were young. Yeah. Okay. Um, did... Did they resolve, did the U.S. resolve their differences with this group in 1952 after their skirmish by some agreement, or did they just decide to not? So the question is, Will, did they resolve their differences? Yes. He says, for the most part, yes, but tension always arises when you're dealing with someone you don't know. Okay. Um, did they recover any of their spacecraft? The U.S. Did the U.S. recover any of the alien spacecraft that were downed? I'm seeing something on the ground, like a crash. But um, that's kind of where it's, it freezes. I just look at it. It's there. It's crashed. It's in the ground. Part of it is in the ground. But then that's I get a freeze frame. That's all I get. So it, can you ask him why there's a freeze frame? Is there like a, is there such a thing as galactic top secret? Excuse me. <coughs> He says, there are many secrets which you would not wish to know, for the information of such would make one very nervous. Okay. And Got he it. is defining this as top secrets. And he Got again it. says the word military. So maybe that's between the military. 
Yes, yeah. I've found that sometimes when I'm trying to find my labs things and military things and press mm. ships. I get I get like a doorway that says <laughs> top secret and I can't go any further. Um, okay, so then bef- the next question I have is, this goes to the Korean War. There is a rumor that MacArthur wanted to attack Korea with a nuclear bomb and when the bomb was loaded on a plane, the plane was was influenced to crash on takeoff before it got to Korea. Is there anything to this rumor? He's saying to me and he's showing me that, that it was actually um, shot down. Okay. Was it shot down by aliens or shot down by humans? I keep getting the word marine. I don't know why. Marine. The marines? It could be, but it's unclear. I'm not. I feel like, I feel like it's, he showed me a big ship. And for whatever reason, he's pointing at it and he's pointing at the plane. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was shot down from a, like a, a, a Navy ship. Was I, in my past incarnation, was I present during this time in some way? He said you were very little, but you have heard about it lots. Okay. Um, uh, Elizabeth, do you have a dog? Yes. Okay, because he's saying me the dog you have right now is the same dog that you had at that lifetime. That, that actually doesn't, doesn't jibe <laughs> completely. Okay. Because, but, but, it, here's a, but it would jibe with me being little in this lifetime and hearing about it a lot. And that, um, so it may be, be somehow I got this information in this lifetime. Yeah, he's, that's what he's saying. So I'm just going to leave that, see if it makes any sense later. Um, let's see. Flatwoods. What else? Oh, Flatwoods. Well, Flatwoods was the crash UFO that the military, they had people see military go to where there was a crash. Okay. And then top secret. So I think we're done with, with my questions up to the 1950s. I can't think of anything later in the 50s. Okay. I'm going to bounce into, um back a bit into the 1940s on our previous episode uh joanna through or rob through joanna mentioned that the vril institute with my goddess girlfriend maria um they never did get their flying disc to fly uh the u.s came in had the plans for it tore them all up off they went uh scrapped the thing they didn't go down and build a big base in Antarctica where they're, they're still active today. And Maria ended up, uh, who was the psychic the, and the channeler for the information back in the thirties under the Nazi regime. She was brought to the U S and she was a spy in the cold war. Uh, and she was caught, tortured, murdered, and uh, disposed of in a river in Yugoslavia. And she's never been found, and which is sad because she's stunningly beautiful. Or she. Maybe was. that's why she came to you that one time. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, we did then go get follow up, and one of the questions I had in uh, in regards to that, I said, um, or myth, you know, it was one of the questions from the group, or even Elizabeth might have asked, did Hitler die in the bunker? in East, well, what it was in Berlin as the Russians were moving in. What does Rob say about that? When I asked him if he died in a bunker in Germany, he said no. And then he says to me, escaped. Mm-hmm. And then I hear the word South America. Right. Yeah. Now, 
and that's what that's what we got the first time a couple of months ago when we had this. That is eighty years ago, ish, um, or seventy years ago. Do you could Rob tell me what country um, Hitler eventually died in? I keep hearing Argentina. Argentina. Tina. And could you tell me what city or town or village he died in? What I'm seeing is a small town. I'm not seeing a name, but I see the letter N as in Nancy in it. And whether it's the first letter or a name or a letter in it, and I feel like it's maybe five or six letters long. It's not a long name. It's a shorter name. Okay. Can you tell me what name? Sorry, I've moved away from the microphone to write stuff down. Um, could you tell me, or Rob, with all due respect, could you tell me what um, the name Adolf Hitler went by when he was in <clears throat> Argentina? The very first name that came to me was Joseph. Joseph. And then I see a letter L as in Linda, and I don't know if that's last name or Joe Joseph L something. Okay. And his his um Companion Eva Braun, Eva Braun, did she make it out of Germany too? No, they're showing me that she didn't make it and she was brutally murdered. Oh. Okay. The FBI, if you go to um, the FBI public site uh, in the United States, you can actually go down to an investigation uh, that the FBI, FBI launched on Hitler. Uh, those those documents are now no longer restricted. The, they've gone past the 50-year mark, and they were looking for him in Argentina. There is a photograph floating around of a, of a picture of Hitler uh, with a little bit of weight on him. He looks like he's in his uh, be 60s, maybe mid 60s. Is that really a photograph of Adolf Hitler? It's funny you ask that question because before I, well, I called the show, he said he's going to ask you about Hitler. And then for some reason, I looked it up and there was a picture of him uh, with some lady with darker skin that, you know, I don't know if it was him because the picture is pretty, um, pretty fuzzy. So let me ask the question. Was Hitler alive during that time? Yes. Was that his picture? No. Okay. Now, it's very, very similar to him, even down, like, the nose size and everything. But who knows? Well, Rob does. That's it. Here's a question. Oh, hold on. Uh, um, Please, okay. just stand by. Is, is, the, is Hitler in a marked grave? Um, I, there is writing on it, but it is it it is does not say Hitler. I don't feel. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, and I feel like it's covered with a lot of dust, so it's obviously old, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I I don't know why I keep seeing the name Joseph. I don't know why. I well, he wouldn't have been going by his name. Adolf, yeah, yeah, Schicken yeah. Gruber right. Or whatever. Right. Yeah. But Eva Braun didn't make it over. Um, did he have any children? Well, when I connect with his energy, I feel he doesn't have any. But then I hear the word bastard. Yeah. So, 
so he may have had children but had either not knowledge or no connection to it or okay. entitlement to it or however you want to call it all right uh will joanne mm-hmm. will someone find his grave and identify him He says not in our lifetime. Okay, good enough. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Well, this is a follow-up to the end, um, because I'm looking at a map. Did you say before that you saw him near near the sea, near the ocean? Did I say that? I have no, I don't remember. Oh, you don't remember. Do you remember? No. Um, I don't uh, see that. Does it bring up any bring any bells? Not, not to me. The, not to, to, me. to Rob. Oh, to Rob. Okay. Can you say it again, please? The name. Nakochia. Nakochia. Is it south of Mexico? It's in Argentina. It's in any town. Argentina. Okay. Argentina and Mexico are not close, are they? I'm terrible with geography, no. so please no. forgive me. No, okay. it's south of Mexico. Okay. It's what? It's way south. south of, way south. south. Of That's what he said, south of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, listen to him. No, but that, no, that's what I'm saying. He said south of Mexico, and you're saying yes? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. In your geography, yes, that's correct. Okay. Was there a follow-up question on that? Oh, the town. You said an end town, and I'm looking at the name. Oh, are you asking if that is the town? Okay. Yeah. I'm asking if it's the town where Hitler died. He said no, but it is close to it. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. And I'm yeah. glad he didn't have any kids. Um. That he knows of. That he knows of. And that's good that they don't know. Which yes. Is a pain a blessing. Head. It is a blessing. Little shickle groovers marching around. I don't know why, but I'm now president of the United States. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going through here. My stuff. Alrighty. Ant- or, or, sorry. Um, what's the place under the water called? Help me out. Sis with an A. Mm-hmm. I just want to Okay, Joanna, go ahead, Elizabeth. Do you want to take a break? Do you want to take a break? To yeah. Rest your yes, then? sure. Okay. All right, you guys Let's take a break. We're going to do a seven-minute stretch here. And when you come back in the last hour with more from our wonderful friend, Joanna the Medium, and our new friend, Rob, and Elizabeth, because she's kind of cool, too. So we'll be back after this seven-minute stretch. Go grab yourself a cup of tea. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, news director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. 
Attention Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you'd join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Greetings and salutations, space travelers, from the Chronicles of the Unknown team. What is Chronicles of the Unknown? I keep hearing about this thing. It's a new paranormal reality TV show based right here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Follow our team as we uncover claims of activity on the Caribou Gold Rush Trail. You can also follow us here every third Monday where two members of our team will be available to answer your questions. We'll give you some equipment updates and some of our experiences on the road. Right here on Spaced Out Radio. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit, and expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night. Live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small. You're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Space Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal at Reiki and Readings. And I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, rivuletrnr, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. It's time for you to make time for you. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy, from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at SpacedOutRadio.com. 
Tonight's edition of Spaced Out Weekend is brought to you by SpacedOutRadio.com, where you can now sign up to become a Space Traveler member. Now, for the final time tonight, here's Spaced Out Weekend's James Tyson. Thank you, Dave. Scott, and remember... SOR Space Travelers Club is $5 a month via PayPal, and with that, you get your names entered in these wonderful monthly prize draws, access to private group interviews, access to special section in our website, and much more. And it, like I say, it's cheaper than what, Elizabeth? A half-cap foamed Ariana Grande with cinnamon. And while at spacedoutradio.com, you can read our latest blogs. Check out Eric Markham's SOR Space Wire for your latest weird news. Not that this show's not weird. <laughs> we also have that f- new future. The SOR Sight Lines is there for you if you've had an experience and want it investigated by our researcher, Mike Schmidt, which is one of my next questions. Just fill out a Sight Lines form, and we'll get back to you ASAP. And all information is held 100% guaranteed confidential. Hey, our friend Mike uh, Schmidt, which is really hard to say because I'm so used to saying Schmidt, and it's Smith with a shirt at the front of it. But Mike and Dave, they go out and they go bigfooting, uh, which sounds kind of odd. But uh, they got a an imprint of a a foot, which mm-hmm. they believe up and down was a bigfoot. Could you ask Rob if they were correct in assuming that was a bigfoot? And if that was a Bigfoot, well, actually, we'll find out first, and then I'll do the follow-up. Okay, so the question is, was it a Bigfoot? Yeah, what the casting they have of a, mm-hmm. a, a giant foot, is it from what we would call the uh, Bigfoot or uh, what is called an echo. echo? Echo. He says, yes, you're correct. Oh, it was. Excellent. Will... Um, is that echo still around the area? No, it has since fled, but he said to you, there are no paws this big that a bear would have. No, there wouldn't be. And yeah. the, uh, it, it, it's, I'm just curious because, uh, you know, they're going to go up there looking for it again and hopefully they find another one, another trace of a Bigfoot. Um, could Rob tell me if they're going to be successful doing that? It's funny how he answers. He says they're going to keep trying whether they, whether they will be successful in finding one or not. That is to be determined. Ah, oh. well, that makes sense. Yeah, we and it's that. and it's um the way he says it to me, it's almost like uh, the the hunt for it is what gets them going. It's that that's the that's what gets them going to hunt for it. The, the, the yeah. I don't know how to explain it. The you adrenaline understand? on the hunt. Yeah. Yes. The yes. searching. That's it's yeah. the game. It's 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 the hunting. It's going back. It's very. We want to do it. It's like me when I go fly fishing. You know, half the time I don't really catch, care if I catch anything. It's just right. the whole rhythm right. and the relaxation. Yeah. It's uh, you know every so often the fish will bother you and you'll catch it and you go oh really oh, okay hmm. let it go. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey James. Yes. I, I have a question for you. Um, d- have you written down the answers tonight? No. Nope. Not that I'm going to have to go back know. over top of these things. Oh my goodness! Because um, I was thinking we might recap what some of the answers were for anybody who came in late. Um, but never mind. Carry on. And and I know that um, I'm guessing in some of the chat rooms. I'm in the tweeter tweeter. Twitter chat room right now, and uh, I'm sure somebody's going to be asking questions, even though at the beginning we said don't, <laughs> so until we've gone through all ours. So we went through uh, the Adolf Hitler, we're still kind of bouncing around on that, uh, died in a small town in Argentina, and uh, was he, was it a suicide, or did he die of old age? I hear natural causes. Ah, okay. okay. Natural caused by. I I also see he told he said to me he had three children. Oh. Okay. What could two of them be twins? Well, I, that's we're assuming because that's what James was trying. To, he was looking. 
that's quite possible. Remember when he said uh, somebody had children and the lady was one of one of one of them. There were yeah, more than one. One of the mistresses. Bastards. Yeah. 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 I have a question about Maria. Did she now? It said you, you said she didn't escape, but did she actually get to Argentina and get killed there soon Maria? after the war? Yeah, Maria Vaughn, whatever the name is. Brown. Maria oh no, it's Eva. Eva Vaughn oh, Brown. Eva. Eva. Oh, Eva. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. He says to me that she didn't have a chance to escape. She was captured. As she was trying to leave, did the okay. cap the people who capture her know who she was? Yes. Oh, those damn Russians are keeping secrets on us. Actually, it's funny you said Russians because I felt it was actually Russians. Yeah, they were the ones that were in that part of yeah. uh, Berlin. Yeah, and, and I uh, and I and I feel that she was raped and brutally murdered, <laughs> or brutally raped and murdered. Yep, that would be the Russians. Um, yeah. Now there is a nom- there is a anomaly. At the bottom of the Baltic Sea. And it's a round anomaly. And it's uh, it's always been uh, a bit of a question on what this anomaly it is. Could Rob tell me what that is and whether or not um, it is something from Earth or something from somewhere else? So he's calling it a sphere. Yep. Is it like a sphere? Okay. Yes. He's, he says it's a calcified object that has fallen, quote-unquote, from the sky. Okay. So was it a um, an object that was... Uh, human-made? Yeah, no, not human-made, but made um, by a race of beings. Oh, hell. Hey, Rob, was that a UFO that crashed? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I have to laugh. Mm. This was an object that has fallen from an aircraft that was not of the human humankind. Okay. That's what that we is were his answer. Checking. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now Is it um, a sphere? What is it? It's a sphere. It looks like a disc. Looks like a, oh. a disc and it's at the bottom of the Baltic. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's and actually, and that's oh. one of the one of Joe's questions again. He comes up with the good ones. I tell you, when we put out for questions after our show for questions, remember telling you don't ask questions on this show. We had an entire two hours of questions on that show to get, and you all <laughs> jumped in. And uh, yeah, Joe, Joe did. I think Joe's the only one who actually listened and sent me questions for weeks after. Um, Via, via Facebook. So uh, thank you, Joe, for doing that. That uh, I really appreciate that because it kind of holds us accountable on the stuff Thanks, that we Joe. didn't um, we didn't write down because the information was just coming full bore. Um, uh, Atlantis, Rob, uh, did Atlantis exist? Was Atlantis part of the human evolution, you're asking? Yeah, was uh, food. Yes. How yeah. should it do that? Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Where is it? He says deep underwater or what you would call below the, lev- the sea level or the level of the sea. Okay. Is he familiar he- with how to use a GPS machine? <laughs> 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 what is the no, GPS can- location for that? <laughs> if he can do that, let's, we'll go back to Hitler's grave. Well, let's do this. Let's do let's do the like cutting things in half. Is it on the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? Okay, so I'm looking I'm looking at the globe straight and he is pushing me towards east. Okay, when you're looking okay. at it straight, what yes. continent are you looking at? Uh, okay, good question. Jesus, here's my geography lesson. Okay, no, I need is to it help with like that. North America and South America with a Mexico in the middle, or are you in Africa? Yeah, I am. Exactly. I am. I am Canada, U.S. I'm looking straight at Canada and U.S. Okay, and it's so it, okay. he's okay. taking me to the right. 
Okay. Is it in the Atlantic? Is it off the Atlantic coast of the U.S.? He said it's closer to Pacific Ocean. So is it in the... Odds of Bodkins. Are you looking at the globe Odds. upside down? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Did, is it on the other side of um, Asia? To the east? He says it's the opposite side, the opposite side of what you're looking at right now. Okay. So if we took a string and we, where in the U.S. would we put a dot and then bisect the earth? So. Um, He's, he's actually pointing me towards a border of, what is it? Um, I want to say B.C. Manitoba. Is that how it goes? No. Is that how it goes? B.C. No, Calgary. Yeah. That's how it goes? Yeah. No, no. Hold on. It goes British Columbia, Alberta, uh-huh. Saskatchewan, Alberta. Manitoba. Okay. So it, it, you see that, that line, and then I'm being taken slightly down, but then I hear the word Nevada. So somewhere there. Atlantis is in Nevada. No, no, no. You yeah. no, that's where that's where the, that's where the pointer is from which where you start the string that she was talking about. Okay. Ah, okay. And does the string do the inverse um, GPS from that point to the southern hemisphere? Or does it just go straight across the earth? He says slightly to the left. Okay. So that's the inverse. Okay, you would end up you. at the left if you yeah. And and the left and, and what you would say down to the south, it will end up in the south, south of where it is on the northern hemisphere. Is that correct? You're pretty close, he says. Okay, we can figure that out. Okay, where have you got it? Elizabeth, you lost me. So if you cut the earth in half, if you, if you figure out that point, I mean, we didn't figure it out completely, but you make a triangle from B.C., or, or Manitoba and Nevada, you make a triangulation, because we don't know how big Atlantis was, but is he basically saying that Atlantis was the size of a triangle with a point at the border of B.C. and the border of Manitoba and the point of Nevada, and a border in Nevada, then you'd get a triangle, right? Mm. If you put a dot in the middle of the triangle, Mm -hmm. you're going to come up, you know, depending on where, roughly, you're going to take a string, cut the planet in half, yeah. And do an inverse coordinate. Oh, for five, six. Just yeah, tell me where it is. Well, like, is it off the Honduras? Be that would be somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. <sighs> oh, so he did say Pacific Ocean. Okay. Yeah. He, he did say closer to Pacific. Yeah, it'd be closer to the Pacific Ocean if you if you do an inverse across. Anyway, I can tell explain it later, but it's it's complicated geography. That I, I'm a geography major, so okay, never good for you. Geography <laughs> major. We both aren't. Geography <laughs> major. Sure. I made map. A okay. Lot of maps. Map check. Okay. <laughs> I want you to know if you if you were in Alaska uh-huh. and you went straight down past Hawaii and were opposite of. The border of Peru and Chile, would that be approximately where it is? We'd have to, no. It, it, it would be further to the west than that. Further but, to the, uh, further west? Yeah. So closer yeah, to Asia. through the earth. See, I'm yeah, not cutting, the whole cutting through the earth thing and doing, <laughs> standing on your head and holding it's a mirror. Math. It's math. No. <laughs> Do your Don't math. Worry. Tell me where the inverse coordinates. We just okay. do the inverse coordinates. We got to figure out what's in the middle of that triangle first. Okay. And I don't you, have. A- you, you know what you do? So. You got to do that. You get ten minutes. MIT grad. <laughs> Actually, no. I'll you have look. five. MIT grad. No, I'm not an MIT grad. Stop oh, you, saying that. I worked at MIT. I did not graduate oh, from MIT. No, just Please janitorial. Um, okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. So you don't know your ass from the hole in the ground. Okay, hold on. Here's no, the. I, uh, I don't know nothing. I just worked there. I just worked there. <laughs> yeah. I, did. I went to MIT. Yeah, because that's where I parked. And then I worked somewhere else. It's like, oh, here I've been telling people you're brilliant and you're not. 
Um, I am. I I'm, I'm brilliant at some things. I can tie so my shoes. So what happened to Atlantis, <laughs> Rob, who's now just shaking his head going, oh, what am I doing with these humans? What if, Joanna, what have you done to me? What, what happened? have you done to yourself? <laughs> what happened to Atlantis? Atlantis. Okay. So what he's showing me is that there seemed to be some kind of a shake, as in an earthquake, and part of um, a, a crust or part of Earth crust has broken off and fallen to the sea okay. or ocean. All right. That makes sense. Um, was the civilization that was uh, occupied Atlantis, was it more advanced than the civilizations yes. on the mainland. Yes. Okay. Was it? Oh, sorry. Then the ours. Then ours. In, in on the mainland areas, like in North America, Asia, was Atlantis civilization more advanced? He says that there were yes. Um, um, what's the word, please? Advanced beings. Oh, were they? Uh, were we? Determined they are what were they non human aliens per se, not it's just highly evolved beings um, that lived on earth. And I don't see them as non humans, but they do have an element to them that is out of the ordinary. Ah, uh, all the only thing they didn't have was the ability to forecast earthquakes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> hey, we're really smart. Oh, we're gone. Uh, Did they cause the earthquakes? No, it was due to atmospheric changes. Ah, which gets me into my next set of questions with the last half hour. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but what, one more question about disappearing islands. Off of the coast of England and um, just a little bit south of Ireland, there had been reported that there was a island. And this island... and. Why I'm curious about it. It's very, it's common in in, um, paranormal discussions is that sailors could see the island every so often. Like a ghost island? It was like a ghost island, but it would be huge. It would be, um, you know, like the the, the size of Maine or something in the U.S. It It was a good chunk. And when you go on Google Earth, where this island allegedly is or was... You can actually see the when you do the underground search on Google Earth, you can see uh, what would it be called an alluvial veil. It's it appears like some uh, the the um, ledge, the underground ledge outside of the UK and and the and, and the British Isles had slid in. I was wondering if that island did exist, and um, did it actually? slide down and did we lose it uh he said that it was lost civilization it was a civilization then yes gone it was supposed to yeah, yeah it's supposed to be a pretty advanced island too lost, and then gone. So yeah, lost civilization yeah interesting okay ladies and gentlemen he's, re- a- he's actually comparing the two the atlantis and the ones you were just talking about mm-hmm. uh there's there, there seems to be some similarity to them and it has to do with the advancement around being able to grow and produce um, at will. Kind of like okay, we do got now. It. And and I'm talking more about like crops, like um, growing, um, just something about being having te- an advanced technology, but it seems to be pure. It's not like bastardized. Um, mm. Being able to I don't know, put some components together. I can't quite say it properly because uh, he's showing me being able to grow um, seemingly out of nothing. Then something advanced about that. Okay. Okay. So here's a question for you just to place it on a timeline. So our modern agriculture, our ability to be able to grow at will from seeds is about 10,000 roughly years old. Is this older than that? Yeah, I feel like I want to go back. Okay. Go back before that. Yes. He talk, again, he says this is an advanced civilization we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
he says that what we human know as far as technology, even though it has grown exponentially over the last 10, 20, 15, 15, 20 years, it is only a tip of the iceberg of what is actually possible. Hmm. And there will be a lot more technological advancements in the next 20 to 30 years. That's sweet where I'm going to be going with this. Um, mm. He must there, read your mind. Well, no, he knows where I'm going because we've talked about this. Um, okay. <laughs> well, he and I, we, I shouldn't say I talked to him. I just put some thoughts out there to see where we go. Um, one of the things that we talk about the other Sundays of the, the month is the shift. And mm-hmm. we're entering into the shift in 2017. Uh, <laughs> all right, what happened? You guys just shifted. Um, mm-hmm. it, it kind of connects to one of the questions here, again, from Joe. Um, and it's in regards to Planet X. Was these events that caused great um, Earth shifts, let's call it, or um, tectonic plate uh, relaxations, which caused tsunamis and areas on Earth to drop, was it caused by what we call Planet X? Um, Is it about that? Was it because that came into our solar system and kind of uh, threw everything for a bit of a poop, let's say, and the uh, magnetic uh, field shifted? He's saying that the results of which you speak had a lot to do with atmospheric changes. And at, and he had told us earlier that these events were caused by atmospheric changes. Oh, okay. Do you want a different answer then? No, I... If so, he's he's he, so it's, he's saying saying the same thing. Yeah. So expand, is he's, perfect. Yeah, yeah, Elizabeth is asking Rob to expand. Expand if you can. Which which okay. means um, my question is: Were the changes caused by a meteor coming close by, a comet, something else coming close by the planet, <laughs> and affecting the atmosphere and and the gravitation? Okay, mine was just Planet X. What is Planet yeah. X? Because I don't understand. What is Planet X? Uh, yeah, Nibiru. Nibiru? Nibiru. But could okay. it be a meteor, another heavenly body coming close enough to Earth to affect the as- atmosphere? Yeah, we'll get to that one almost. That's the... I know, but I want to... I... Okay, which question should I go with? No, I want to go with... I'm trying to... De- my question is based on Planet X or this Nibiru, if it's actually a real planet, if it's caused... This is where I'm going, Elizabeth. Okay, fine. Okay, and okay, we'll, fine. Don't make me pull this car over. The no, I'm back. Okay, back. so Rob, uh, Nib- how are you? Want to say it? Nibiru is was that planet the cause or part of the cause for places like Atlantis and the ghost island south of Ireland to uh, disappear? Is that what caused? the atmospheric anomalies. The only thing I keep hearing is heat exhaustion, but I'm, I'm getting stuck on that. I can't expand anymore heat on that. Heat exhaustion. Okay. Will, um, did that planet X or Nibiru come through our solar system um, and if so how long ago was its last pass not very clear but he what I'm sensing is long long time ago and he, I'm seeing the number if they're 15,000 or 1500. I want to go with 15,000. Yeah, 15,000. Yeah, yeah 15,000. Yeah. Okay. See, the other answer, I I can make sense out of that, of the heat exhaustion. Um, okay. There have it, been multiple ice ages on this planet for a long time. And when there is an ice age, the Earth deforms under the ice. <laughs> um, and so 
you have a tremendous changing of continents and land masses and water waterways and different pressures from the ice moving forward. Mm-hmm. So is, am I in the right going in the right direction with this? Can you ask? He's saying to me something to the effect that the ice age causes um, an sh- a, a atmospheric shift. But the way he's showing it to me, it happens underwater. So it happens on the sea level. Right. It, that's and, then exactly s- right. and then somehow it has an effect by, uh, above sea level. The, what happens is the oceans warm up and the currents stop. Flowing because all the water warms up to a temperature where we no longer have the currents moving water around the Earth. So cold stays, cold stays at the top, and warm stays in the middle, and we don't have mixing. And when you don't have mixing, you end up having an ice age because your interesting it gets colder and colder, and, colder yeah. and it finally moves down toward the toward the equator. Interesting. Wow. Cool. Well, I'm glad you know this. Hey, it's. Is heat? Ask him if heat exhaustion is would be kind of the same thing that we would call global warming now. Yes, because he kept saying that to me over and over again. I didn't say it because I was waiting for the next question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So global warming. Um, yep. Now so he does tell what, me that the global warming is a natural process that, that it, it's a cyclical process. No. Right. So, so although although there is some human interaction with this process, um, it is not entirely um, done by humans. No. So the Chinese, they invented it. <laughs> the, could, could you, when is, it was 15,000 years ago that this planet X or Nirubu, we're going to call it Bob, um, mm-hmm. came by. When is it coming again? He said it won't matter to us because it's going to be thousands of years from now. Okay, that's very interesting. And I'm really glad he put that forward because we got it from another being that it would be like 50, 60 years. Mm, No, that's not what I got. Good. Hopefully he's not doing Elizabeth math to very slow and figure this out. What does Rob... Go ahead, Elizabeth. Mom, he's he's teasing me. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> it's Lord Woman. Um, <laughs> what is the end of 2017 into 2018 going to be like, Rob? Um, uh, for us people and our banking systems. Before you even finish that question, he says, so now we're getting put into politics, are no, we? No, not, not into politics at all. Won't have anything to do with the government. It's just the banking practical systems. Practical banking matters. <laughs> These like, are practical do we accounting. <laughs> yes, do we put it under our pillow? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, just, let me just ask. Let me just form my thoughts here. He says to me, be careful what you ask for. It may not be an answer you want to hear. Ooh. Rob, Rob, <laughs> it's Rob, Rob, Rob. Uh, Come on. Skeeter Wellhouse comes on, and this is what we talk about. We mm-hmm. we talk about the answers we may not want to hear because okay. we we believe that it's actually part of why some people are awakening to mm-hmm. um, their more spiritual side, and also the reason that um, individuals like you, Rob are now stepping in and communicating through those people that we call psychics uh, that we are getting prepared for something. And one of the reasons I have the, have this platform is to get that message out to as many people as possible. And, and so they understand why it is their awakening and what they're going to be doing with that. So, 
what oh, he said to me earlier, he's yeah. asking me to, um, to, I actually wrote something down a moment ago, and he says that we are currently undergoing uh, what he terms a global awakening of consciousness. Now, in simpler terms or in English, what he's saying to me is that people are starting to wake up, which translates into people starting to have different ideas about the things they have always done. Some of the ideas will be contradictory to what they have always been told they should do, and some of the ideas will be really good ones. I guess they both will be good ones. Mm -hmm. um, let me just see where he wants to go with this. The purpose of this process is to help the humankind understand that chaos only breeds more chaos, and therefore peace is what has to transpire. At this particular stage, we are, or you are, in a place of your evolution where a lot of chaos has to take place in order for peace to lift its head, head up from the rubble. Okay. My understanding, we're coming into a, what would be um, deemed a depression in the economy. Uh, I'm not getting political but it will be a depression at uh, the level, if not worse, than it was in 1927. Does he also see that? He says it will feel like things are sinking and that like you have no control. Mm -hmm. How long? He's not, call he's not calling a depression. Yeah. But it, it will affect... Um, investment what we do with our money and and affect us on that level as opposed to a food he's, level yeah he said it will affect production production yeah mm -hmm. got it that makes sense how long will that last approximately four to five years Is beginning when again may i ask Okay, let me see. Ouch, ouch, he just gave me a shot on the neck. Ugh. He's giving me a kick because I yeah. shouldn't have asked. Did he? Sorry. Is he? Is he? Well, because he said, you know, yeah. we get... Did he, we yeah, get, did he give you a kick, though? Did he give you a kick? No, I know oh, that me. He, yeah, yeah. He okay, gave let, you a kick for me. Let me, just, let me just see what I can... He says, Joanna, those are the things we chose not to discuss, remember? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to stick with politics. Drat. He'll give you no, a little taste, but yeah. Okay. The time. The time. Yeah, the starting time is. What, what he's saying here is just look at your world now and you will have your answer. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank there, you. There was a also a. Um, we wanted to discuss what is sometimes called in countries a civil war where there's mm -hmm. a bit of an issue between one side and the other. It's and called uproar. 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 Yeah. But mm -hmm. this one will be more exciting, kind of like the old American civil war, but different because there'll be other countries involved in it. Uh, like rooting for one side while the other countries are rooting for the other side. Is that, pa does that occur after this um, in, uh, uh, this other three to f or four to five year non depression. Mark, yeah, let me just let me just see how he wants to answer this. He's showing me with his um, gesture that everything is going to take place for the purpose of equalizing power, mm -hmm. and he's showing me this globally, not only country wise. Mm -hmm. And he calls it a unification. It's not like you remember the uh, you remember like you're that old. Uh, the the end of the Roman Empire. It was just oh I you know, remember was, yeah I remember for sure yeah yeah it was Wednesday. <laughs> uh, it was just basically like a switch came on it was gone. And a few other the empires they you know it's not a we're not getting into the. Uh, the empire building um, phases we did, like the British Empire expanding and whatever empire expanding, and then it all being 
shut down. Uh, so it's not a, an end. It will be an em- end of one empire because then everything we will all kind of get together globally. Correct, Rob? I'm asking him. This is all about equalization of power. So it feels to me like the way he's showing it to me, um, people, countries coming together for common purpose and common goal, as opposed to one against another. So unification versus being exclusivity. Perfect. So would that be every country on this planet? Or will it be... Eventually, most of them, yes. But I don't feel it's going to be in our lifetime. And if it is, we're going to be quite damn old. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah we, will see, we will see the beginnings of it, but we will not see the actual essence of what it is. So the experiment in being um, a, a country of individuals with a locked borders, that would probably, once that um, social experiment is done, then will awaken to becoming more globally connected. He says, when you call it experiment, you are insinuating you are being experimented on. This is your doing. Okay. So. Also signifying that we have power in this as opposed to feeling powerless. Oh. Very well, chief. Very well. (laughs) All right. That sounds interesting. So at least we're going to come out of it with, you know, both our, our shoes polished and our jeans mm-hmm. might be a little tarnished, but we'll be okay. Um, looking ahead in Rob's book of looking ahead, we have an ice, ice age coming? Not this year. Not, okay. <laughs> if you looked out the window, for God's sakes. No, it's... Um, it, I'm just wondering because of, uh, you know, we all just talk about global warming and the rising of the uh, rising of the sea level and things like that. Uh, It's going to be a bit of an issue. Are we going to be seeing this as the beginning of? He's actually actually showing me that the water levels will first um, fall before they rise. Like a tsunami. Oh. Oh, God, don't tell you that. He didn't show me that. No. Well, it, before an ice age, they do fall because the water ends up getting rebound up in the northern at the poles. So they do fall as the ice age begins. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm hope that I have wings and I'm not here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> or and, I, and I'm having Rob's job. I got Rob's job. Yeah. yeah. And Rob's going, oh, great. Now, where do I go? Yeah. More of you people coming up with wings or screwing me around. Um, do you? Uh, a couple of the questions that popped up here, uh, really quick here, are, are there has been talk about, and we went over this the first time, has been, has been talk about these um, bases on Mars where Americans go up there. In fact, uh, there's, Dave has had them on as guests where they've, uh, say they've worked up on Mars for X amount of years. Do they really exist? He says there's three of them. Really? On Mars? Not yeah, me. he shows me three. Okay. No, no, he shows me three. Because when we talked to him about that before, he, there was none mm-hmm. on Mars, but they were on the moon. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> He says, yes, there are three stations which are not of humankind. On? Mars. Mars. Do humans actually (laughs) work on them? Mm, He's not showing me one way or the other. Oh. Um, Hmm. And are there bases on the moon? Again, he says yes. But I feel like I'm starting to lose him. Has any human been on a base on the moon? He 
He says to me, many have been, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense to me. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Okay, thank it's, God. You know, I'm, I'm thinking all these people that say they've been up on the on Mars working, they're probably on the moon. It's closer. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't a lot of a the, the people who work with the Zetas, we end up going to the moon, and some of us remember it, some of us don't. Um, it's, all, but, it's just all cheese anyway. The, yeah, it's yummy. Yeah. Exactly. Are, are there any bases on Earth that would be um, mixed with uh, human workers and what we call our alien or space brother workers? He doesn't answer me, but what he shows me is an image of two parties discussing something. So it's a feeling of something being in discussion or collaboration. So mm-hmm. they're working on it. Sounds like. Yeah. Do we have any underground bases? In the you crust of the earth, you mean? Yeah, yeah. like below. Like, is, there, is there bases underneath, deep in, in the earth? I'm not getting anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think she's getting tired out, and, and besides, I we have so. to tell people how to how to contact her because she's an awesome medium. Yeah, could, yeah. Let's do that. I think he's in a couple pulling of me out. Yeah, and uh, shoot, because I got the the reptilian question. Shoot. Well, try me and see what happens. Okay. Um, there's the reptilians. People have been saying. Uh, since our the last time he was on, I know he doesn't like us saying calling them reptilians, and I don't know what what else to say because they are described as a number of things. He first mm-hmm. said they didn't look like quote unquote reptiles like lizards, but there were, in fact, um, people who have seen these lizard beings with like uh, Galen Chauncey has seen one with a, a tool belt, a little four foot, literally the little gecko looking like a thing. gecko yeah gecko yeah yeah and yeah so what what are those other beings that look like lizards if they're not reptilians and what should we be looking for if we want to say hi to a reptilian first of all he said never look for one because you'll never find one excellent so they're not going to be able to um, like. So that's number one. But I want to ask about this gecko per thing, person. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is really strange for me. He is showing me that it's another form of being that is disguised as whatever it's trying to project. Oh, so <laughs> maybe it's trying to project something a little bit more different different or yeah. frightening or then what it is or then what it is or who knows what it needs to i need to project something with 20 arms because i need to climb a wall interesting i have a question i have a question mm-hmm. about that is it actually a little blue guy i hear silvery yep okay silvery cool yeah and one more thing, uh, because uh, I got an email from a fellow who wanted me to ask, uh, does Rob know what the name is for the alien race that I'm from? You or the person? No, me. You. I'm only getting a word constitution, but I know it doesn't, it's not, it's not, I don't feel that's what it is. I'm not getting it. Okay. Mm. I just, I had to ask. I'm supposed to be some gangly blue one too. But, uh, but then again, he said I had reptilian stuff in me too. DNA. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? Okay, Elizabeth, where do we get a hold of this young lady? We get a hold of... 
John underground the underground media. you get a hold of it um <laughs> yeah when it's basically we can get a hold of you joanna uh at joanna the medium.com we can go mm-hmm. to your uh website um and it'll link over to the youtube channel where you do your uh readings and your um astrology stuff i want to say a result. videos it's, yeah your videos, videos yeah Mm-hmm. And uh, they can see you there, or if they want an appointment, they can book it online at joannathemedium.com. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And right. if you want to go talk to Elizabeth, that's, oh, I, I almost said spirit of whatever it was. Uh, Liz, it's elizabethengland.com. Look at you guys on all dot coming. Elizabeth has gone <laughs> to sleep, hasn't she? Oh, my Lord. No, no, I'm okay. reading the chat chat things that i didn't read before so oh very yeah probably a lot of people asking questions why haven't you answered my question i wanted to know where isis was hiding in uh, shush nah. um yeah join me tomorrow for two mediums and a large phone and ask joanna a question because <laughs> she'll be wide awake and uh hopefully your throat's better joanna thanks very much thanks rob and Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Everybody out there, you know, you can tune in here five days a week for Dave or two days a week and for me. Keep it. Hey, let's roll. And hey, 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 hey. Let's be careful out there. Far over the snow, what are those voices? edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. He's dead, Jim. 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 He's dead, Jim.